Welcome to episode 120 of Trick or Treat Radio. Trick or Treat Radio is a phantasmagorical spin kick straight through the heart of pop culture. It is navigated by the Deadites. The Deadites are the world's greatest electroshock band. We destroy monsters, we drink booze, we win championship belts, and we've been known to hang out with our friends to the north every now and again. Isn't that right, dudes? Ooh. Russians? Uh, no, th- th- I don't think that's to the north of us. New Hampshire. <laughs> well, that is to the north, yes. Uh, I was talking about another country, though. What country is north of us, Raven Shadow? Antarctica. Vermont. <laughs> Jesus. Top of the world. <laughs> Top of the morning, dude. Oh, shit. Dude, we're in Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have... Uh, so we're actually... We're down two deadites this week. Well, one deadite and one hanger on. <laughs> uh, one deadite and one deadhead. Yeah. So no Monster Zero again this week. He's uh, he's he's on an extended hiatus. He should be back with us soon. It's, we had down the two best dancers in the whole organization. Well, that, may, that may be true. Yeah. So uh, no Monster Zero this week, unfortunately, and no Tiny White. Do you know where Tiny White is, Dynamo? Uh, yes, it's classified. Oh, okay. Well, there you go, folks. It's classified. Okay, so. Wegmans. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get held uh, again for trying to buy alcohol? No, we bought, we ran out of sorbet. Oh. All right. Well, the people who are on the show, we have myself, Johnny Wolfenstein, the pencil pusher and producer of media for Trick or Treat Radio and the Deadites. We also have the immortal gunslinger, singer, lyricist for the Deadites, Mr. Donna Mars. Hi, guys. Why, why are you down? Why are you so glum? I miss, I miss Monster Zero and Tiny White. Oh. You miss him so much you're sitting in this chair? Well, I usually sit in this chair. Are you sitting in that seat just so I block you with my head? No. Though your head would be enormous to be able to block. <laughs> even like, I don't understand me. why you don't sit over there. Because I don't uh, want to sit next to Raven Shadow. <laughs> okay. <Hey. laughs> you know what, Raven Shadow? I just have a good experiment, by the way. Uh-oh. I miss Tiny. I miss Monster Zero. Why don't you leave and see if I miss you? Oh. <laughs> Somebody at my fan will miss me. Yeah. <laughs> And we also have, speaking of, we have the chain-smoking, hand-kissing, baby-shaking, hot-pocket-loving, comic-book-reading nerd, and the official smoke machine for the Deadites, Michael Ravenshadow. That's right, Johnny. It's uh, November. Thanksgiving's coming up. So, gobbleo, everybody. November? November. November. Gobbleo. <laughs> by the way, if you think that Jim Smith from Tail's mustache is awesome, wait till you see mine. Tail? Huh? Is, 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 he's in a new band called Tail? Yep. Oh. How many A's? <laughs> How many eyes? No. I spell tail. How many vowels total? F- 14. Oh, all right. Or well, Alicia gave us the answer uh, to the question. She, s- she said Can- oh. she said Canada. Well, uh, that's that's <laughs> a very nice segue because we do have joining us on the show this week, my boy from way back in the day. We used to do internet radio and uh I d- I don't know if he wants uh, his old name to be known. I'll I'll let him decide, but we have our boy from the north, from T.O., Tur- from, from the Toronto. We got our boy Rocky hanging out with us. And he's moist. Oh, he is? <laughs> yeah, I, that, that is very true. Uh, hello to, uh, hello to Bastin. <laughs> That's Bastin right. Harry. What up, Rock? How you doing, fellas? We're good. Doing real good. This is uh, awesome. Thanks for R- Rocky. Literally jumped on a fucking grenade like a couple hours ago when when wow. I found out Tiny was uh, Andy was... showed up to do the show. Yeah. <laughs> when I, I found... packed my ass full of gauze and I'm here for your entertainment. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! What did you pack your ass full of? I'm a little tired. Tonight is gauze. Catch me on Friday is something different. Oh. <laughs> the gauze? Because we might have a problem. <laughs> The gauze. I think he's a little known superhero, like a tick villain, maybe. Ooh, oh, yeah, <laughs> the gauze, yeah, I see, you can see that. Yeah, he's full of tinier men. <laughs> <laughs> he's hanging down with sewer. His sewer urchin's sidekick. There you go. <laughs> Mutated bloody gauze flushed down uh, that city uh, sewer. Ooh. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> you saw, you don't, I don't know. I've known Rock for about a, a, a year or so now. Yeah. I've, I've never spoke with him, doesn't he? Sound like somebody you know? Like yeah, it sounds like it sounds like Rocky. I can't place. It is strange considering the number of times we've seen each other naked. (laughs) God bless Snapchat. (laughs) (laughs) So Rocky and I have known each other. I don't know, Rock. What we're looking probably back in like twelve, 
10, 12 years now, I think. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, you would be correct, sir. I think I was doing the math earlier when we talked, and it was about 11, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. You're better at math than I am, apparently. So, uh, <laughs> The this, night is young. Yeah. <laughs> this is back when, uh, before before I was involved with the Deadites, I was doing some little internet radio gig with uh, with Rocky. He was uh, he was the, the the head slave master over at uh, <laughs> the, oh, yeah. the radio network. <laughs> and then see, once again, it revolves to a sexual thing, bringing up the whips and shit. Let's just move on. <laughs> exactly. No, uh, yes, it, it it was. I wasn't. A, I hope I wasn't too bad. <laughs> no, not at all, man. You you got me into doing the radio thing. I was I hated talking back then. Now you, you, these guys can't shut me up. <laughs> right on well hey man you know you your old show you guys who don't know who never listened i uh it was all music based it was more music than anything but uh johnny's voice would cruise into some really wicked tunes and if you had the right head on you could just sit back and drift off for a couple hours and then go <laughs> shit reality happened and i didn't know what was going on <laughs> well thanks for that rock no you earned it man <laughs> I mean, you're here. You're here, dragging these other guys down with you now. But you know, hey. they're you know, can't be too nice. <laughs> so we have we have action packed show coming up. So let's go ahead and tell the folks what's coming up. So we are going to review the film Witching and Bitching, uh, directed by Alex de la Iglesia. Uh, so we're going to review that in just a bit here. And then later on, if you're watching this live at 1030, we're going to connect up with author and uh, filmmaker. Uh, we have, well, we have two Alexes, Alex de, Igle- de Iglesia and Alex de Campi. Two Alex de. Oh. Is there an Alex de Large? Is, is he going to be on? Is, uh, can we get him? <laughs> uh, rest in peace, Dim. <laughs> That's right. Dim, yeah. The, the actor who played Dim uh, passed away. Uh, pour one out for your dead I homie. Didn't... I didn't well, think I that pulling down your throat, you dead homie. I didn't think that fall in that fountain was that dangerous, but I guess. <laughs> so uh, we got a lot to get to. Super excited to talk to Alex DeCampi tonight. We um, uh, we all just read the latest issue of Grindhouse, which was pretty f- drive in bleed out. I believe is what the new second volume is called. Yeah, um, we checked that out, and there was some pretty. Uh, crazy shit going down in that, right? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I've said it before. I don't scare easy, and I can't think of the last time something in a comic book made me go, "Oh!" But uh, something in those last uh, four pages, yeah, definitely made me wet my britches. So, wet your bitches? No, my britches. <laughs> oh, oh. so sexy. What are you? Everything. Y- witching, witching, and britching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you consider so? So, Raven Shadow, did you just say what? Well, I'd have to turn to sex again. Is that what you just said? <laughs> Uh, I was thinking that you're fucking crazy, Rock. How do you oh, do Dynamo that? Said it. Oh, what I say? Oh, Dynamo said yeah. it. I'm just, oh. I'm wondering who equated urinating themselves to sexual. <laughs> Dynamo, I really? That straight before we move on. Yeah, yeah me. That's typically Dynamo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can see that though. I got all the problems. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You do. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what's going on. Lots of stuff. Um, man, we we got to jump right in. We got just a few more minutes in the intro here. We unfortunately don't have time. We have not decided on the contests that we're going to run in typical Trick or Treat Radio fashion. Um, But what I can tell you for the Amazon contest for the month of, I guess we'll extend it to December. We'll do November and December for every item you purchase using our Amazon link on trickortreatradio.com. We'll give you an entry into a contest. So that's all I can tell you right now. We don't have all the details figured out we don't want to know what the prizes are going to be i've got it you oh, guys yep. if, if you're actually going to give away an amazon i'm fucking balls in son. <laughs> <laughs> i can guarantee you that they will not be crappy eight by tens with michael Rio and no no hey. no definitely not people enjoyed that oh but it's like a hoodoo bag with everybody's pubes <laughs> <laughs> make a pube beard Uh-oh. oh it's a horrible <laughs> idea <laughs> um <laughs> What? I think somebody already did that. I saw the Michael Raven Shadow Halloween costume. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Pat pending. <laughs> you gonna like get that uh, service marked? Is that what it is? Uh, uh, Pat Pat uh, pending the beer. <laughs> yeah, try it, man. Rocky, maybe you can get me over there in Canada. What? Yeah, here you're For big beer. <laughs> I hear I'm you're with you there, brother. Come over. We'll do a beer tour. We'll Ooh. wake up three weeks later in Mexico. Nice. 
They got leaves in Canada? That's way far north. <laughs> they have leaves in Canada? They have le- That's leaf- a good question. Let me look at the flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have uh, leaf piles? Is that what you mean, Raven Shadow? Yeah, you I thought for... Rock and I could jump in some leaves. <laughs> Apparently they got them up there. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, dude, you're, you're bringing me in on a whole odd couple cinematic moment that I'm moist again. Thank you. <laughs> we should Raven broadcast Shadow. live from Canada. Can we do that tonight? Uh, well, we are in part. Yeah, I mean, people can tune into us. They have YouTube in Canada, you know. No oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, we got, we do. We have indoor plumbing and shit. It's, yeah. amazing. it's amazing. In the frozen tundra of Canada. <laughs> yep. There you go, Raven Chat. I'll see you learn something new every day. Nice. <laughs> so I figure I should combat Bombaleo. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling some movement on this end, Rock. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Nice. I couldn't be less comfortable right now. <laughs> uh, Let's go to I just want to walk over there and stroke Dynamo's head like an insane troll doll. <laughs> My hair is kind of like that. Wait, what do you think about that? I think, I, I think that's who's next. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> we do have to uh, head to a quick break, and then we're going to come back with the movie review. But like I said, Bye, bye, bye. We've had lots of people using our uh, Amazon link purchasing stuff. So uh, go to trickortreatradio.com, click on the Amazon uh, picture, and then from that point on, everything you buy in that session uh, will be will get a cut of it. And so it helps the show, and it helps you enter this contest that we don't know what the fuck it's about yet. I got, I got nervous. I thought you were chastising me for my sexual ways. Uh, I probably am. Just yelling bye 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 over and over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> that's a uh, very revealing dynamo. What you haven't listened to the last one hundred and twenty-five <laughs> episodes? Yeah, uh, I try not to. You think Ryan? You think Ryan Gosling looks like Miss M under that drive coat? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dude, Sigmund Freud would be jerking off in the corner analyzing this fucking moment. I think he is. <laughs> Who's that in the corner? <laughs> All right. He's so losing his religion. And we also are gonna <laughs> we also are gonna do um a contest for our friends over at X Split. X Split. Uh but we still have yet to figure out the parameters of that as well. Yeah. It's been a very busy, busy time here, folks. So so we're going to dig deeper into that, and we'll figure something out by next week. Absolutely, by next week, we'll have the parameters of the contest. So if you would like to try to win a license for XSplit, XSplit. Uh, you can do so very shortly. And what else, Raven Shadow? We've got the FIB, the, the Trick or Treat Radio Facebook group. Go to, to uh, Facebook and do a search for Trick or Treat Radio and ask to join, right? Yeah, we'll let you in. Well, maybe. If well, you... maybe, maybe. Let's slow it down. We don't let everybody. No, we, we let pretty much everyone in. Mostly. And... Can you back up two seconds? Have Raven Shadow say that same exact line a lot slower with a little more bass? Yeah. Do we'll, it, Raven Shadow. We'll, we'll do let it. everybody in. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got douche chills. Jump in. I was about them. to say, it was a Mufasa moment. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I think we need to cut to a break. So. <laughs> Uh, we'll be back in just two minutes, and we're going to talk about witching and bitching. The scary story. Do you love to dance? The big scary monster haunts at midnight is a collection of dark songs about sex, love, death, revenge, and the end of the world. Brought to you by the world's greatest monster hunting This is Matt Kennedy of Astron 6. You might know me as Manborg. You might know me as Father John Sullivan and Father's Day. 
But what's important right now is that you're listening to Trick or Treat Radio. Hello, darlings. It's your favorite whiskey-drinking, litigious, singing, dancing fantasy girl. Want to reach out to me and the world's greatest monster-hunting multimedia organization, The Deadites? Log on to Facebook forward slash The Deadites. It's got all the info you need to follow the world's greatest monster-hunting band, like live appearances, info on your favorite Deadite, music, and all the links you need to our new weekly multimedia and all our side events. Too many letters on Facebook? That's okay, sugar. Just follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at The Deadites. Hope to see you soon, and we'll leave the lights off. I can tell you I'm never coming back on this show. (laughs) (laughs) Especially now that I did that thing. (laughs) Which I will be sending you an invoice for. (laughs) Turn Dynamo. What's up? I can't. I don't understand. Did Michael Ravich had to leave already? Uh, I think so. Uh, I think we're pretty lucky, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's terrific. That's We'd... sad. Why would you guys bust that boy's balls? <laughs> <laughs> we got rockets. Every... That's all we need. That's as close as anybody's ever been to his balls. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I once again, I rely on you guys' knowledge of those sorts of things. So. <laughs> Smile and nod and yeah. wash my brain out later. It's on his Wikipedia. That's true. <laughs> you know, I actually had a vision that either Monster Zero or Michael Raven Shadow is going to get a Wikipedia before someone makes a Deadite's Wikipedia. That's and true, I, yeah. And that'll be the end of me. <laughs> I'll never see Avengers 2. I'll never see Ryan Gosling's Deadshot. Fan, if you're out there, make it happen. Fan. <laughs> the one... Have you found out who this fan is yet? I'm not sure. I I I, I kind of assume Lot Averages is going to be one of them. Uh, maybe. Oh, some jerk! Well, some jerk just sent us a, a voicemail message. I have no idea who that's from, but that'll be fun to listen to you later. Maybe it's my fan. Uh, it could be. Oh, well, it's the stalker. It's not. <laughs> it's not Tiny White because he's logged into the chat right now as me. Oh, he isn't. Yeah. Uh, what? The Tiny- leash is in the chat. All right, uh, so let's get into Witchin' and Bitchin' here. So this film from 2013 is available now on Netflix, which is how most of us watch it, I think. Um, It is 112 minutes, and it is a comedy horror, and it's directed by Alex de Iglesia and written by Jorge Guerra (laughs) Cheveria, I think, and Alex de Iglesia. Take two. Yep. No, that's that's just one take on this. Mm. Okay. <laughs> we got no budget. One take. We don't do multiple takes. Uh, famous Yankees catcher. <laughs> and uh, it stars Hugo Silva, Mario Casas, Pepon Nieto, Carolina Bang, Ooh. and <laughs> Jamie Ordonez. Let's, let's that can't see. be her real name. And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? Uh, and very simple... Very elegant, elegant, eloquent, elegant. 
I'll go with that. Very elegant synopsis here. A gang of escaping jewelry thieves get trapped by a coven of witches. So what we're going to do is we're going to try the same sort of review style that we did last week, Dynamo, since I know you like that so much. Yep. Um, who would like to lead? I have a ton of notes, so I don't, I don't mind you leading. You can lead, if, yeah. All right. You'd be the head of this daisy chain, sir. All right. <laughs> I'll be the, the head of the human centipede. Uh, oh, God. You? No. Oh, shit is right. <laughs> <laughs> Raven Show, you can be uh, next in line. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be the caboose. <laughs> nice. If, you, if, you're behind, if you're behind Raven Shadow, ass to mouth means two things. Hey. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I just don't want to be behind anybody who had Mexican in the last few days. <laughs> well, you don't want to be anywhere near me and Wolfie, though. I did have Taco Bell. <laughs> Ta- and and, and Moe's. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. Oh, Rocky, How do you, you do that to yourself, man? <laughs> I haven't done it to myself in like two months. So. We have a, a Southwest burrito <laughs> in the bathroom. Oh. All right. So let's let's jump into this. So... It, what we'll do is, if you guys have something to say about any of the comments that I make or the conversation, just just jump in and and you know, let's. This is a film discussion. Yeah, I was under the impression that sitting in this chair meant I had to come with a lot of notes that I was going to read in the entirety. And yeah, get did, mad if did anybody you, interrupted me? Did you bring some notes? Yeah, yeah, there are lots of them. <laughs> okay, good. Then. Shut up, I'm reading. <laughs> You do need to be more aggressive sitting in that chair, though, so I suggest do something to rile yourself up. Well, I have no pants on, so... <laughs> he is. He <laughs> is, Rock. I fucking assure you, he yeah. is. He is riling himself up. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Taco Bell. And no, it's not us <laughs> on a chair. Yep. Wow. Forget about that. It's like Anaconda in the stable. You got an Anaconda device over yeah. there? <laughs> the only way that's happened is if you're prairie dogging. <laughs> <laughs> so, Witchin and Bitchin. All right, Witchin and Bitchin. All right, Witchin and Bitchin. Yes. This film started great. I love, I love the opening. I think it's it's very, a lot of foreshadowing. I thought that was nice, yeah. and it has a, a payoff very quickly after when when she was talking about the sponge. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. what is what is she talking about? And then when the you get the payoff of that, yeah. it's fucking hilarious. Uh, the sponge might must be like a a big thing in Spain <laughs> over the last couple of years because he, it was uh, featured prominent. Predominantly in uh, record three as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, imagine that uh, getting chased by demon zombie things. <laughs> the I thought the opening credits were pretty fucking great too. Like yeah, a, I liked them. Like the art that they used. Yeah, loved them. I I'm, I like that sort of stuff. The art was nice. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was like a postcard. It was like a collage of Salem postcards. <laughs> yeah. Mm, that's actually <laughs> yeah, that's very descriptive, sir. <laughs> You might, you might be enhancing Raven Shadow's earlier moistness. Oh, he is. <laughs> Take me places, sir. I'll shut up. Go ahead. And so let me let me set the scene a little bit. This is the opening, or not the opening scene, but one of the first scenes in the film. So there's a heist. I mean, it says so in in, in the synopsis. And the people that are heisting, it's 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 fucking incredible, right? I'm not sure that that's the verb. Uh, no, it's 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 as a, verb. a former professional criminal. <laughs> you I wouldn't s- say that you're heisting. No. I saw it, it's kind of like Michael Mann did a live action Toy Story doing a bank heist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I I think that works fairly well. So you we on Hammer music in there. I got you. I'm with yeah. yeah. So they're basically like street performers, right? There's there's set up. There's uh, there's all these like people in costumes. Uh, we have Jesus um, he, on the cross. Uh, is painted up in silver, it was like silver paint. Look, mm-hmm. looked awesome. And then we have uh, the sponge. <laughs> I'm not going to say much more because it's it's such a good payoff if you don't know. I think. <laughs> and uh, we have the army man. Yeah. Uh, who else we got? We got Mickey Mouse, right? Mickey and Minnie was there, maybe. Yeah, Minnie. Yeah, the Invisible Man. The Invisible oh, <laughs> Man. Fucking awesome, 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 man. <laughs> yeah, forgot about him. So, and and like they they set the whole thing up. Like they they have a plan. They're they're calling each other on cell phone. I love when Jesus picks up the cell phone. Like I don't know why. There's just something incredibly funny about Jesus picking up picking a cell phone up and, and there's talking a later about it. cell phone moment in this movie too. Yeah, <laughs> and I think w- this is probably one of the best uses of a cross ever. Yep. W- the way the he whatever he concealed <laughs> in the cross was fucking awesome. He so he you know pulls out a weapon out of the cross and. Uh, and I thought having Sergio the kid was fucking awesome. When yeah, he... I was about to say Alicia in the chat room just said the kid, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, de- I definitely saw a little too much of that kid over the course of this film, though. 
<laughs> a little yeah. too much, yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe so. I don't mean amount of scenes. I mean amount of... Uh, no, I know. Skin, yeah. skin. I yeah. know what you mean, yeah. Uh, but I, I thought that that was really fucking funny, like, just having the kid there. And, like, as the, as the film goes on, we learn more as, as to why he was there and what, what the idea was. But I, I think the first 10 minutes of this film, like, it's that alone is, is almost enough to make it a treat. It doesn't, like, it almost didn't matter what happened after. Um, but that heist scene is fucking classic. And there's so many good things that happen in it. And, and then when they, in the getaway car, like, with the, with what happens with the dead in the getaway car? <laughs> 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 Fucking great. Ugh. And the the sponge in a gunfight. Oh, amazing. That was one of the best things I, I may have seen this year in a film. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that the writing was very solid. Uh, there's been like within the first twenty minutes, there's already so many ridiculous predicaments that these characters could be put in, and. Like in the car when they're in the escape vehicle when they're in the taxi getting away, the and the taxi driver. Yeah, the taxi driver and the fucking passenger. Yeah. That passenger <laughs> is fucking in, like his role in the film is incredible. Yeah. And and when when uh, Jesus, uh, or uh, what was what was his character's name? I'm drawing a blank. On was his he name. Sergio? No, the kid was Sergio. No, the kid was Sergio. Yeah. So he was uh, Jose. Um, so Jose, when he's on the phone with his ex-wife. You know, talking about the kid like during a shootout, <laughs> mind you, like that was just fucking great. Like, so there's so many like different predicaments. Can that... I reiterate real quick? Please, this please. Is that, this is the second cell phone moment when the phone rang and it was his ex-wife and it said Armageddon on the yeah, iPhone. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck yeah, buddy!" <laughs> it was. I I have to agree with you. I think that whole first like ten minutes left me saying like. Well, what do they got to fucking do now? Like, I knew they were witches because it was in the title, but I was like, like, how much more movie can they put after this? Like, this is like a whole nother movie. Though I will say that the Romans would probably disagree that this was the best use for a cross that has ever <laughs> happened. Like, yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, I think that the action in this was Too like, soon. <sighs> sorry. <laughs> I'll wait till after Easter. The action in this was Raven Shadow switch chairs for a second. There. <laughs> uh, the action in this was shot like an action movie, mm -hmm. which is always like something that like bugs me when like a horror movie or some other kind of movie does action beats and they don't they don't look like you know they're filmed very like staticky or, or statically or, or whatnot. Like these like this was shot and edited like a very good action film. This one part and mm -hmm. there's a lot of moving parts too, which made it. Even cooler. It would have been very easy to kind of just pull back and shoot this, you know, like as a whole thing in like one or two shots. But it was awesome. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you. I agree with you a good bit there. But that that one sequence you're talking about came into one of my visual issues with that is I don't mind a shaky camera, especially in heavy instances. But there were sequences in that where. I think the guy was jacked up on coffee, Coke, and 500 other things because that camera was starting to bug me. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I can see that for sure. It, but, I mean, it was it sort of – it almost always bothers me unless it, I don't notice it. Like, and, and this was an instance where, like, I think there was so much going on that I think that the way the camera moved must have, like, just not registered with me because it, it, fe it felt like right. it was moving appropriately to the – well, full scale riot mostly. that erupted. There was just a few instances, and actually, it wasn't even the parts when the streets were getting crazy. It was, uh, it was later, I think, before they got in the cab where it had kind of thinned out a little bit, and the camera was still very jittery. It didn't yeah. settle the scene settling. Sure. Uh, I I also think another thing that was kind of uncharacteristic to, you know, when uh, uh, this type of movie like does like a beat like an action beat or even a crime beat like this it's usually a throwaway thing um <clears throat> and they did just a lot of good like uh, thinking like almost like it was a small movie within itself how like tightly cropped the uh looking up shot was of the two gunmen um mm -hmm, yeah you know it really added to that type of like dog day afternoon like claustrophobia there you go that's um, a nice so. that's a nice compliment dog day afternoon there for that <laughs> for sure I've um, seen some movies. I know my, <laughs> I know, I know my my present company usually drags me down, but I, I I know a thing or two about these things. I even tried to make one once. Tiny didn't talk to me for a year afterwards, but I tried to make it. 
Uh, hey, man, if you don't try, you never know, right? Mm-hmm. I believe so. Tiny called me Hitler, like, midway through. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Uh, <laughs> where do you go from there, actually? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think I definitely am I the only one that saw the, the From Dust Till Dawn comparison. Thank uh, you. Right, yeah. Brock? I mean, like, the crime picture in the beginning and then goes into... Oh, yeah. Really? I, mean, I actually... It didn't occur to me, but, I mean, now that you mention it, sure, I could see that. Yeah. The, it didn't the... have the snap of Dust Till Dawn. Like, Dust Till Dawn, it was all road movie mm. cons, you know, a little bit right. of preacher stuff here and there, and all of a sudden they just flipped the switch. Right. And it was like, fuck you, buddy. And, and, and you established... The... Right. You didn't know that they were witches, maybe, uh, unless you know a little bit about witchcraft but like unless you read the title of the movie yeah. <laughs> right right yeah but th those characters were you know established before yeah yeah um the heist and anything else too right, which right. was you know kind of led to a which is the big complaint about from dust till dawn it, 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 not with me mind you but that it did turn on a dime you know it yeah. like which is what i loved about it i agree yeah. right it's probably safer you know, it's maybe safer filmmaking to to do what they did here to at least establish these. Slowly then. Yeah, so it, it's it's um, it, it's well done though. I think you know, if I may digress for a real quick second, Dust Till Dawn couldn't happen today. That was the last movie that was like that. That there was no internet to like spoil it. Like all right. you knew about Dust Till Dawn was the TV spots that that did give too much, but you know you had to. Rem had seen one of those TV spots like today to not get wrapped up in the movie when you went and saw it later on. Like, it's not like, but I would, I would, I would venture to say though, part of that kind of helped it too, because you knew it was coming. And so you were expecting the gradual lead in. So about, you know, the first hour into the movie, you're like, okay, well this is just the Tarantino flick, you know? Right. And then when they finally do, you're like, I knew it was coming, but fuck. Right. <laughs> you know, And it happens all at the same time too, which is something that, you know, horror movies don't generally do. This did a good job of doing the kind of, um, uh, I feel like the horror template that films like um, American Werewolf in London uh, did very, very well of like, everyone is aware that these people are somewhere they shouldn't be except them. Which which I think is a, is a terrific, again, like Dust Till Dawn is an example, like, until all hell broke loose not i don't know why i'm worrying about spoiling dust till dawn Un until <laughs> until vampires came until vampires came down to them dracula showed yeah. up <laughs> Titties, damn it yeah um like the the geckos fit perfectly in that biker bar you know that that mose eisley den of scum and thieves oh dynamo's rubbing up my right tree now <laughs> <laughs> get me into a star wars relationship and i'm in <laughs> Ooh, i'll be a padawan <laughs> damn that's right. very weird <laughs> does, does that mean you're gonna get get killed like <laughs> oh, shit <laughs> sam jackson can't save you sam jacks be a young lane so the one of the things that i don't have too many complaints about this film let me uh, i guess i'll just state that now one of them though was that cracked windshield did you, was were you guys incredibly distracted by that? Was anyone else? No. It was CGI cracked windshield, and it was bugged that? the fuck out of me. I didn't even notice. No. Okay. All I right. Yeah, I didn't even notice that either. Did did um, you watch on HDTV, right, Donimo? Correct. Okay. So I guess this. Uh, all right. Uh, it it bugged me. I don't know, but that was the start of some really uh, uh, poor CGI. <laughs> There was some CGI that was really bad in this, and yeah. I, when I I have a, a a note later that I'll get to that that'll that'll probably like make a little bit more sense, but um, so yeah, but I don't know. It was just really distracting, um, just seeing that. But I mean, that's that's not going to take me out of the film, but it just was a little bit distracting. Um, the I did like that they had like three generations of witches. I thought that that yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah. You got the grandmother, yeah. the mother, and the daughter. You know, Ooh. until Ooh, what? I loved her fucking opening scene and the bike with the little tramp stamp going on. <laughs> oh, Jesus, shaved yeah. head, Carmela Bang yeah. all day. <laughs> did you 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 probably did a little bit of research on her too? Uh, I did some fucking research after I was <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, two or three different times. Two or different. Can we do this movie again next week? <laughs> No. If your bathroom looks like you just got the ceiling spackled, stay away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys see that over there? What? 
I, what? It's it's going down Route Nine fast in the opposite direction. What is it? It's our credibility every time <laughs> Michael Raven Shadow speaks. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey. But uh, Raven Shadow, I guess why don't you talk about the um, the broom scene? Oh. <laughs> I don't remember the broom. Oh scene. Oh my god! Oh my god! Dude, refresh, refresh. No, I'm not Is gonna. Are you fucking right? kidding you me? Tiny and say you didn't watch. This you didn't watch. I didn't see the fucking movie. movie. No. I saw the, the bang. If you did not, if you know, if you don't, get... I think it's ironic that the only thing he's able to talk about at any length is the first thirty seconds, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fucking metal teeth. Remember the metal teeth showed up? Nope, that didn't up, happen. Like, Come on, she was, upside, she was on the phone talking from the ceiling. <laughs> how, can not, <laughs> how can you not remember the, oh, the broom scene? Feeling Bro, I, I, <laughs> to be dancing on the ceiling. Yes, you saw that. It's it's your girl. What Bang? Bang. Yeah. I won't say who's... What, what, what happens when they come back to get the bag? Who is that, the mother? Okay, for real? Go. Did you no, fall asleep during no, this? No, no, there was a two cops who their their revelation. I saw two that. Caps. No, so the caps. <laughs> so they, so he, Jose left the bag at the witch's house, right? Oh yeah, because they forgot the money to go back to go back for the bag. So when, what happened when they went back? The shenanigans. Oh, I mean, I I, I don't I want to know the an- I want to give the right answer, but I don't oh think God. I remember. Refresh you would mind. remember. I remember. Dude, there's I'm, no way I. I wasn't even into this chick that much, and yeah. I won't forget that broomstick scene for a little yeah. while. Yeah. I, was, I had to ask my special lady froggy. friend to leave the room. I'm never going to think of a witch in the same no, way now it's true. because of the scene. Yeah, now. Mm. Did she use it in a... <laughs> All right, let's go. Jesus in a Christ. cleanly manner. In an uncomfortable she place? The, she swept the floor. In a comfortable place? How could you... Did you watch like a, a an edited version of this or something? No, I watched the version the pirate gave me. No, no we're not Netflix. watching the fucking Netflix, you yeah. idiot. I don't, know. I don't know the answer. I'm you featured. dummy. I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, know scene. back to the movie read, discussion. Read the, read the chat room. It'll make you want to go play Frogger. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't remember that. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah, the uh, uh, the dialogue in this was terrific, huh? Yeah. Like, I, don't, I, like, I always am yeah. suspect of subtitles, but... Uh, this definitely seemed like spot on. Like, it was very s- snappily written. Like yeah. it, was, it was just like You're talking about the conversation between the two guys at the door. Well, just in general, just, like, yeah, yeah, oh. just just like a lot. Of, I mean, there is a portion of this film, despite all the you know the very elaborate set pieces that go on during it. There is a big chunk of this film that happens in a car, um, mm-hmm. and it's all carried by dialogue. And uh, you know, the dialogue is is quite entertaining. The the thing for me, it's. It's always sort of hard, I think, to get comedic timing in dialogue when it's in another language. But the films that are w- written really well, it, it translates and it comes through. And I think this... Spanish is close, though. Yeah, you know, like... but I think this is a case... There are some Japanese films we've seen that have, like, you know, that have that comedy. John sure. West. John West is not Japanese. <laughs> he's but he's but Spanish. No, but he's, he's all Spanish. 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 That was the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you miss that part of the conversation we just had? Yeah. Where's my notes? <laughs> it apparently wrote out on the broomstick, too. <laughs> yeah. Look at my broomstick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, Raven Shadow, I love you, man. Like, part of the reason I enjoy every week, I love you, but... You're making me crazy if you can't remember the broomstick. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I've had a couple <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> yeah, we all get to call bullshit. Bullfrog. What about what about the man in the fucking toilet? Oh, Do you remember oh, that? That was awesome. Oh. I was just about to bring that yeah. up, actually. That's that's those one of the one of those tropes that will freak me out every time mm-hmm. because uh, okay, so dig this right before. I, my young life, I lived in the States. I'm originally from South Carolina. <laughs> you oh, don't say. You, you used to be in yes. a toilet then, Rock. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, this is the thing, though. I had a bunch of friends that had rustic places. And when you'd have to take a crap on ground floor in a high water table, things get into the pipes. <laughs> so, like, so, like, things coming up out of pipes while you're taking a squat is not something that sits well with me. So if you put that in your film, <laughs> you're guaranteed you're going to get a little fucking sphincter pucker from me. Just <laughs> was anybody else afraid the second time that this happened, when it almost played out more, that that lady was going to drop the deuce? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, like, wondering, like, this is when we're going to find out exactly what type of movie this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm with you. <laughs> it was the truest, te- truest test right there. But that's my biggest problem with this movie is for everything that was kind of good with it that I enjoyed. 
I always felt like they could have afforded to go just a little bit further because it didn't quite, it took you there, but it didn't take you there enough to make you feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That makes sense. And I've, I've only, I haven't seen many of uh, De La Iglesias' films, but the ones that I have seen, uh, this, I think this film showed a little bit more restraint than some of his others, which I thought was, was interesting, but he still did go over the top a couple times, but he definitely showed a little bit, a little bit of restraint. In the end, with the with the with the giant, I don't even know what to explain what yeah. the hell that big thing Troll. was at the end. <laughs> yeah, but, was, yeah, I guess you can call it that. Everything he didn't do, I feel like, was a deposit in the big giant CGI titty bank. <laughs> <laughs> God, I gotta soundbite the fuck out of that one. <laughs> I want to ringtone that one. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys are going to get this reference. Well, actually, Dynamo probably will. But the old man with the witches, like the guy who was at the restaurant and was, I think he was the grandmother witch's husband. Okay. I don't, I don't know I thought, his name. I thought maybe it was his brother. I'm not sure why I got that vibe. I just because was he was. Brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. M- maybe. But he looked like fucking Marty Feldman with that crazy yeah, eye. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. That's was all like, I thought of, too. Yeah. He looks like fucking Marty Feldman. Because Marty Feldman is one of my favorite, whether it be Igor and Young Frankenstein yep. or even in God We Trust, that little yep. televangelist flick he did. Yeah. He was just comedy genius and silent movie. Yep. Yep. Marty Feldman is just, he's one of those kings that could do it with a look, what most people can't do with professionally written dialogue. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad. Like, I, I, I shouldn't have underestimated the, that, that reference because uh, uh, he's, you know, he's pretty fucking awesome so the as the movie kept going on like there was some dynamo you're gonna love this there's some subtext that was sort of like floating to the top that wasn't really that i didn't really get early on you know like i really like the idea of all the misery contained within the the pond wedding i love that yeah it was totally expanding upon uh uh, brandon lee's uh soliloquy and and the the crow. crow yeah yeah Ooh, f- nice depth pull there. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I like watching you guys show, man, because like occasionally you'll be like, okay, well, they're kind of brained, and all of a sudden somebody pulls out this joyous little jewel of like, fuck yeah, I see that, man. <laughs> it brings me back every it's like, week. It's like the guy in the toilet pulling out a... Yeah, you should have... <laughs> if... You should have seen that my house in the broom scene if you wanted to see a depth pull. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh... And yes, Doctor, that's when the nightmares began. <laughs> but that at that point, that's when it, this this other thread sort of started to come through a little bit more. And it the fact that this film is is about relationships. Yeah. Like at, at that point it, you sort of get this like, oh, like, okay, like everyone sort of has this this thing going on, like some sort of situation with a relationship, whether they like someone and haven't told them, whether they're in a bad relationship, whether they're in a good one or w- whatever. Like, I just thought it was really interesting to to see that. And, and as the film went on, it was much more apparent, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and I just love the idea of like, you know, because uh, maybe Raven Shadow and, and, and Rocky can speak to this, but, you know, the, they're... Marriage does seem to have the stigma attached to it that there's a lot of misery associated with with marriage. You no, know, every day no, magical no, man. Johnny, it's a you're fucking... lying. That is not what it is. <laughs> Hang on a second while I get my wife out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> every day is shamrocks and lollipops. <laughs> right yeah, but that's because that's because Raven Shadow's married to a leprechaun, <laughs> <laughs> and he stole her gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mrs. Hornswoggle's listening. Yeah. Be nice. She would she would she would leave Shut if he didn't Raven keep Shadow. making her shine shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did like how how Camilla Bang, you know, was was I don't know her name in the movie, but um, she was all up in up in uh, Jose's you know grill and how the mama the mama witches were like, oh young girl, you should be doing drugs and yeah, having yeah. sex and like doing all horrible things that Speaking made me chuckle. Her name's Ava, by the way. Ava. Yep. Ava. That was the biker girl, Ava. Yep. Yeah, Dame to kill for. I won't. I won't say who's. I, I know Wolfie will know, and he probably thought it, but I won't say who. Especially her haircut, whose girlfriend uh, that's a friend of ours that Eva reminded me of, but uh, it made me uncomfortable a few times with the eyes and the haircut. Who? I'm not going to say. Oh, I don't I don't know who you're referring to. So. What's it rhyme with? Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's a that's one I can't do. <laughs> wow, you made you made him stutter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I that thought was impressive. I thought about it. 
um, I mean, I'm I'm getting a little I'm getting a little snaky just uh, having the conversation right now. Jeez. It rhymes with Mo Momidian. <laughs> <laughs> what? Momidian? I think I know, but uh... <laughs> oh, Snoop, I know. Uh, can we can we get a, a witch to force Tiny and Dynamo to finally make out? Ooh, <laughs> like what? these two fucking what you, guys. What are you a weirdo? <laughs> you don't need a witch for that. You just <laughs> pile of leaves and spoons. You just need to be there on Sunday. <laughs> Shit. Some cheap what? Irish whiskey <laughs> and That's, a pile of leaves. That is the weirdest thing <laughs> that I have ever heard anyone ever say. Do it. You don't know how you do it. Quick, Dynamo. <laughs> Raven Shadow's hiding Twinkies in his beard. <laughs> <laughs> he said Tiny Rock. <laughs> oh, sorry, Raven Shadow, my bad. I got Tiny on the brain. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, speaking of sound bites. I'm really taken back. I don't know how to like what to say. <laughs> well, there's that scene where the, the, the witch made the two dudes make out. But why oh, would yeah. you want to see me? I don't want to see you guys make out. <laughs> But I'm saying just, to, a random just thing. to get it fucking over with. What? We... If I was going to make out the dude, it wouldn't be that guy. <laughs> well, you did say uh, talk about your sexual preference. Yeah, well, I mean, I not to say I haven't made out with a dude, but it still wouldn't be that guy. <laughs> Look, man, December's almost here. You're going to need some place warm. I think nesting in Raven Shadow's beard would be an <laughs> optimum place to be. You know, well, if... sure and, and, by beard, he means, and by beard, he means pubes. Every... Yeah. Every two minutes that you Me kiss Raven wife. Shadow is another week of chemo. So like, I'm not sure that I would. I'm not. I'm not going there. Wow. Let's go to commercial. I don't know where to go when it goes to the cancer moment. So that's fun. Oh, I do want to say though that you guys are fans of the random moment, as I call oh, them, yeah. where it's like something that's completely just off the wall for no reason pops into a movie for a brief second. Yes. It. Okay, the two old ladies on the side of the road with the bush flash. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was what like what? What was that all about? Yeah, I didn't even catch it. I don't think it was when they were speeding. With the... When they went down the hill. No, bef uh, before. Before. That. Yeah, right. Was it right when they were about to 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 meet the witches for the first time. Mm. That's what. That's what and the happened. kids and saw. The kids saw it. Yeah. Yeah. See, I yeah. didn't catch yeah. that. I thought it, it actually it made me uncomfortable because. Like when you see things out of context, like from your car, like that has been like the like a, the cause of so many nightmares. So just even having two old ladies like laughing at the side of the road, like I felt was like uncomfortable. I must have <laughs> overlooked they were more the, than laughing. Yeah, the pubic sensation. She, yeah, she she pulled up her her dress. Did somebody show me Raven Shadow's Halloween mask? <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, the stuff with the taxi passenger, like just it just kept escalating. Yeah. I loved how he came on board. Yeah, he, he joined the team. <laughs> yeah, sort so of, so to speak. Yeah, you know the way I felt about his character to a lesser extent was sort of the whole ear carving scene in in Reservoir Dogs, where it was like uh, they would break away for a brief moment to mm -hmm. deal with like Harvey Keitel talking to Tim Roth or whatever, and then you'd come back to it. Yeah. I kind of felt like it was an elongated version of that, where it was always like, "Hey, let's take it and see what the guy in the trunk's doing." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they threw him a sandwich, but he was he was fucking <laughs> handcuffed <laughs> and duct taped over his mouth. <laughs> yeah, and then the sandwich was still there when they pulled him out. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, God. Like little things like that, I thought were just really nice touches. Like the the writer in this case, I, I guess it was uh, De Iglesia, um, just. He just was very cognizant and aware of what's going on at all times and, and just how to make each moment really funny, you know? So that was that was great. And then when you finally meet the guy under the toilet, Louie, um, that was fucking creepy. What was up with him? He's, he's like, talking about his, like, skin, like, <laughs> my skin might fall off or something. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was... It was you know, I was glad to see uh, former Ring of Honor tag team champion Jay Briscoe <laughs> getting more work, though. Yeah, he was weird. Yeah, that was very that bizarre. Was weird, yeah. And and that's sort of that's sort of uh, De Iglesias, uh, his his style. Like, he, but he was like I said, like from what I've seen, this was a little bit restrained because he probably would have taken that to eleven, you know, yeah. in in some of his other films. But what Could I think you is give me a couple of titles of his other films, real quick. Well, the one that I saw, uh, the last circus was the one that that was really fucked up. That was 
that was the one that I think it's still available on Netflix yep. as well. So. It came up uh, as a recommendation. Okay, okay. So yeah. So there you go. So, um, he's also done. What are, what are the other ones? Dynamo Day uh, of the Action Beast. Mutant. Day of the Beast are are his two that like put him on my radar. That yeah. Um, when Day of the Beast was had a Fango write up, um, it was right around the time I started being able to go to horror and comic book conventions. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and it would like if you weren't there at, you know, right when the convention opened, that was like sold out universally. That was yeah. like a big big deal. Um, so this guy gained a reputation for me that it literally took me ten or fifteen years to see one of his films. Mm-hmm. Like after wanting to see a lot of them. Now I'm not a very uh, not. I'm not going to say I've never like uh, you know tied one to the mast or uh, went to, you know t- went down a sail with a knife. But uh. I'm not a very motivated pirate, so I guess I could have if I wanted to. But um, you know, I I just never did, and I'm I'm, I'm glad that it could never live up to how awesome I had heard these movies were, but. The scope of this didn't disappoint me from what I had heard about his other films. Yeah. Okay. The and and like I mentioned earlier, like through all through all the bizarreness and all the witch stuff, the, the movie ultimately came down to being about relationships, I think, you know? Um Yeah, that's fair. With all this craziness and shit going on, like at its heart, that's what it was all about. So um the and there was a lot of shit going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The mother between, between Toilet Man and Big Bertha. <laughs> the mother scene, I think, looked very good in comparison to the rest of the the CGI stuff. For the most part, I thought I think that looked really. It good. It was very stylized in the way that I like that that like the when CG works for me. Like a, a good example of this is uh, I can't remember the director's name, but he made the Japanese film Returner. Um, if you can't make it look real, don't try to make it look real. Just make it look mm. awesome. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, which brings up one little, and once again, this is a nitpicky thing, but when we were both discussing, you know, passenger in the trunk and uh, and the 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 action work, the one part that I had a problem with was during the scene down the hill off the road with her on the car. You know, where I'm going. I don't want to give away too too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After all of that, just the brief moment with the wire work when the car reaches its destination oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with her kind of bugged me. It was like either make it ridiculous or try to make it real. But what you did kind of drifting lazily to like the millennium Falcon, we're going to take an advanced <laughs> move here, kid that drift yeah. lazily to the right, you know? Yeah. That was kind of like, eh. but then they made up for it by quip from guy in the trunk. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I, and I think that that could be part of the restraint, you know, like maybe he just didn't want to go all the way and, uh, you know, I don't know. Actually, guys, we have to, we we have to we have to take a call here. Whoa, oh, really? What? Yeah, like this is uh, this is one we need to take. Like we we really? don't say no. Yeah, I don't. I hate I hate to really like interrupt the movie review, but yeah, uh, yeah I don't I don't know if I believe that this is actually the person. Let me try to call here and see. I hope this Strange is Strange things are afoot of the trick or treat. Ooh. I hope this is right. I hope it's the right number. Uh... Hello. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, is it this is this is really Jeff Goldblum. Uh yes it is. Uh you called me, so deduction would say <laughs> probability of one hundred percent. this uh, is Jeff Goldblum. Yes. Oh shit! <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's nice to hear from you. First off, man, congratulations on your uh, your 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 new newlywed status, sir. Yes, you may you may have heard. I I made the big mistake this weekend. Uh, I got married to a woman half my age. She's thirty one. I'm sixty two. Mm. <laughs> How about that? And she is a, uh, she's what you call a rhythmic gymnast. Now, what that means is uh, not only does she uh, perform on stage uh, doing kind of a combination of what you call dance and, and, and yoga, uh, but she can also fuck in the shape of a Snyder's pretzel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which, 
Uh, yeah. When two isotopes like that, uh, that woman and someone like me meet in a hotel bar called Matches, you better believe something's going to happen. <laughs> wow. That's that's outrageous. So are you going anywhere special for your honeymoon? or? Uh, yes, we are uh, renting a, a, an island. Uh, it's uh, off the coast of Costa Rica. Um, I rented it from my um, my travel agent, uh, Ivan Kutchikokov. He is going to uh, uh, be setting us up. I believe David Copperfield is going to be there. And, uh, well, he won't be the only one making things disappear that weekend. Like that. And uh, uh, it, it's going to be fabulous. Fabulous. Uh, I'll be wearing white uh, all weekend for no particular reason. Mm. Uh, uh, Jeff, I think you should wear those chaps that you wore um, uh, way back in. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> in Buc- you're Bucker talking Bonsai, about Bucker yeah. Bonsai. Yeah, yes, where I was the uh, uh, a dentist, a Jewish dentist, if you can believe that. Now that was, that was not much of a stretch for me. Uh, 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 but uh, no, I think she looks much better in the chaps. Than I do. I sort of look like a uh, unbuttered cinnabon. <laughs> if, uh, if I were to wear those uh, assless. So, so speaking of speaking of assless, Jeff, uh, yeah. what do you th- what do you think of uh, this whole uh, Kim Kardashian situation that's uh, going on right now on the interwebs and uh, you know in the public eye? Ooh, yes. You're uh, you're talking about her her bountiful behind. Uh, well, uh, I have to say, if, if I actually were some sort of, uh, uh, cosmologist or a, uh, a, a nuclear researcher, astrophysicist, whatever you want to call it, I would have thought that that was the shadow of an asteroid passing dangerously close to our planet. Uh, <laughs> that is how large her gluteus maximus appears on the cover of that magazine, and I dare say, I, I dare say, there's no Photoshop there. That is all crack and cheek. It looks like she was stung by a bee. <laughs> uh, that thing could swallow you up faster than a T-Rex on Jurassic Park. <laughs> It'd be all gum and asshole. <laughs> uh, no, dis- no disrespect to uh, to to uh, Kanye. He's uh, he's a brilliant. Uh, what does he do? He's a rapper. Brilliant. Uh, 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 well, he's an African American. He's fantastic. <laughs> wow. Uh- uh, Jeff, I, I know I know you're a very busy yeah. man, and you you have uh, your honeymoon to get to. Uh, is is there oh, any yeah. anything else you want to uh, say to our listeners before uh, before you we let you go here? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> hold on, let me get the paper I was mailed here. <laughs> the uh, that's that is a realistic sound effect. That is a lie. <laughs> uh, I was said to uh, to say the. Uh, Trick or Treat Radio is the greatest uh, podcast ever invented. This the spelling is very bad. I'm not sure who wrote this. Sorry. And uh, the 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 Dites, the Dites. Is that a uh, is that a company that procures houses? The Dites, the Deadites. Oh, it's the Deadites. The Deadites uh, are a fantastic. Uh, Musical uh, act. That is what I was supposed to say. And uh, hmm, there you go. There it is. Cheeseburger. <laughs> well, Jeff Jeff Goldblum, this was this was a pleasure. I I, I don't know how to thank you. I, this just uh, you know suddenly happened, and we had to we had to get you on the line. So uh, yeah. Well, there you go. And you know the pleasure was all yours. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff Goldblum. And now, uh, if you don't mind, uh, my girlfriend is hanging upside down from a monkey bar in our bedroom, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, my penis is pointing south. <laughs> or would it be north? I guess it depends on if I'm upside down. Uh, who knows? I think you need a compass. 
<laughs> I need a compass. Yeah, get a sundial. It's Turn pointing. It's pointing Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fuck her around the corner. <laughs> Uh, good night, gentlemen, and uh, please uh, remember to uh, rent the fly because that's uh, that, that's that's a good movie for uh, for making love to. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully we You're can welcome. get you get you on the show again sometime soon. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, jeez, treat. I think we lost Rock too. Jeff Goldblum's connection's so good, it hung up on Rock. Uh, let me get Rock back on the line here real quick. Wow. Oh. I didn't know he listened. Yeah, well, apparently he's a big fan. Oh, shit. Yeah. I, I had no him. idea. I love Vibes. Remember that joint? Yeah. With Cindy Lauper? Lauper. The the home <laughs> office, once again, I don't know who, who the home office is. They sent me a message and said, here, you better call. No so. shit. So. Transylvania 6 by 1,000. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Sorry, sorry about that, Rock. We we had to. We oh, had sorry to... about it, dude. That was that was impressive for me, man. Jeff <laughs> Goldblum, fuck, man. Thanks for having me tonight. <laughs> I was treated. <laughs> so before we got Jeff Goldblum on the line, we actually have to wrap this review up in a few minutes here. But um, I think I was talking about the mother scene at the end, and I I think that they spent their their ninety percent of their CGI budget on on that right there. Yeah, that yeah. was it. Yep. Yeah, I think it looked pretty good though. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Uh, it looked great. I wasn't a huge fan of how it looked as you were seeing the uh, internal workings mm-hmm. in that one shot. I thought that it wasn't terrible, but not as great as the monster looked itself. Yeah, I can certainly uh, agree with that. The I th- it was almost like a, a like a, a boss fight from a game like Shadow of the Colossus. If any guys have ever seen nice. seen that. Uh, that's what it reminded me of, but that was pretty cool. And uh, the final scene where the kids doing magic, I uh, thought was fucking brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird, neat little story twist that he turned out to be what he is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which uh, didn't see coming. Nope, for sure. So, I guess if uh, anyone else have any final comments before we head to the verdict portion. No, well, great. Uh, <laughs> well, then you let's... guys, kings of the random tangent on relating a scene from something to something else tonight. It's I, fantastic. I think that the giant troll woman reminded me <laughs> of one of the giant monsters from the cartoon in Humanoids from the 80s. Nice. Mm. Oh, wow. oh, hang on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the one that was stuck in amber. You know what I mean? What What yeah. other two shows in Boston were packaged with in Humanoids, Michael Ravenshadow? Uh, it was the, the Bigfoot program. There, there was a monster truck cartoon, uh, Bigfoot. There was Grave Digger. There was animated. There was like mask, but just to hit his head. It wasn't. It wasn't the Bigfoot one. It was the one that uh, had plants. They oh, fucking like, uh, uh, Jason the Wheel Warriors. Right. Word like a motherfucker. Yep. Okay, and what else? What's More that? importantly, uh, this is very disappointing. Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs. Nope. Come on, anybody? Come on, it's truly outrageous. Oh, fucking Jim. Yeah. Oh, Snoop. See? Oh, Jesus. One of my f- all-time favorites. <laughs> nice. There you go. All right, let's go to... So a quick little bit of trivia for oh. you guys about Jim, if yeah. you don't mind. No, no please. Uh, please. Britta, Britta, the girl who was the voice of Jim, the singing voice mm-hmm. in the TV show, she was in a band in the 90s called The Bell Tower down in my hometown, and uh, she was in a little movie with uh, Justine Bateman called Satisfaction, where they played a beach oh, nice. band. Oh, yeah. Snoop, yeah. really? That was that was where I'm from. <clears throat> that beach area, Folly Beach, is where they filmed that. And mm-hmm. uh, she hung around after doing the movie and uh, got up with a couple of guys and started a band. Really nice chick. Can I ask you a question that's been bothering me since I met you a year or so ago? Uh, sure, I might lie. Why would you leave? Jeez, you sound so much like somebody I can't place. Yeah, is weird. it Sir Isaac? Does he sound like Sir Isaac? No, he doesn't sound pretty. Hey yeah, sorry. No, it's um, not Monster Zero. Uh, but uh, yeah, Zero, <laughs> Nick my balls. Yeah, wow, <laughs> it is Sir Isaac. Yeah, wow. See, well, that's good. Touch um, your bum. How'd you end up from a uh, nice warm down there to uh, Canadia? To Canadia? Yeah, like uh, you, you well, like you like. Oh, I'm on the beach and Jem's there, and uh, I had to take a leak so bad I could taste it, eh? <laughs> uh, so, sorry, I continue. I didn't mean to. No, ask. no, no. I, I just, you know, like. Uh, how did I end up here? Um, it's pretty easy. Greyhound. You met that. You meet that chick. Ah. Uh, 
And so uh, I paid to get on the, one of the bands I was in in the late '90s. We paid to get on a bill at CBGB's, Ooh. and uh, it was on a shitty Wednesday night. But uh, she was there. I was there. Shit happens. You stay in touch. Then one day you go to visit. Next thing you know. <laughs> It's 15 years later, you're married and living in the great white north, eh? So you yeah. go from being, hey, Bubba, you want to come over here and see my girlfriend slash cousin to, hey, check out my hot Canadian jig, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with Rock's voice, he sounds like you could spit some game, too, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, some guy can shoot 10-sided dice on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. I, I will. <laughs> Atlantic City, baby. Atlantic City, yeah. You were really incriminating yourself, sir, tonight. <laughs> you're not doing yourself a single favor. Well, I will say. Did Jesse ever, or, uh, sorry, did Wolfenstein ever tell you the uh, about the fifteen whores in Atlantic City? No, the one with dysentery. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, he'll tell you about it sometime when he feels comfortable. Enough. <laughs> I, I will say though that uh, Rocky does have a pretty uh, pretty phenomenal lady there. So. Ooh. Yeah, my my I, I won the wife Olympics there, man. She's like the coolest lady I've ever met. She and she totally gets behind all my stupid shit, and yep. uh, I try to get behind her stupid shit, and we just <laughs> have a good stupid shit old time. <laughs> well, I don't I don't know how I'm gonna afford it. I don't have any dates yet, but I'm gonna have a uh, I'm gonna take a trip up there to spend some time with you and my buddy Lodge William, and uh, Mr. I'm probably Mr. gonna Rossi. Up, yeah, Rossi, oh, Rossi too. I'm gonna we're gonna end up in Mexico for sure, my friend. <laughs> Dude, if you make it up this way, you've got you've got a guest bed. You're more than welcome, and uh, the Canadian beer will take you to the beer garden, and we'll fucking end up in Mexico. Nice. <laughs> Can't wait. Well, we're not saying bye to him yet. So yeah. Labats yeah. are flowing. <laughs> Labats, yeah. Oh, Le- I got better stuff than Labats, man. I'm gonna hook you up with some Sleeman Honey Brown Nectar of the Gods, man. And make Ooh. you fucking slap oh. yourself in the penis. Psycho, <laughs> is, Psycho has been repping for that. My for internet Sleeman, does so, yeah. that, but sure, I'll drink that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's... Speaking of, I saw the Rev is going to be up towards the Ottawa direction. I'm kind of bummed I can't get that far. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, where's Kingston? That's the, the only other place. Kingston, I know Ontario. Where. It's it's about uh, it's closer to Ottawa than it is Toronto, but it's mm-hmm. just south of Ottawa. So you would pass Kingston going from Toronto to Ottawa. That's as far. It's as close to you guys as again. It's so funny. I know so many people up that way, and you all live in the same fucking place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toronto is the center of the uh, Canadian universe when it comes to the uh, eastern side of metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's cut to the verdict so we can uh, make sure we get to um, Mr. Campy on time. So let's do the Busta Rhymes thing, right, Raven Shadow? Absolutely. Trick or treat, baby. I wonder if people would say you're a trick or a treat. Trick or treat, motherfucker. All right, so let's go ahead and give the verdict for witching and bitching. I suppose since I kicked it off, I'll go first. Uh, I think this film is incredibly well made. It had uh, really great locations, great acting. I thought the score was good. Cinematography was top notch and a very well written script. Alex de Iglesia is, I think he's a, certainly a master of his craft, and I think he showed it in this. And he definitely loves using bizarre themes to juxtapose just how ridiculous life can be, which I, I definitely appreciate. I think without the subtext and relationship themes throughout the film, I don't know that I would have enjoyed it as much if it was a stand, like just standalone, like um, without that. I don't know if I would have enjoyed it quite as much. Um, but I think it struck a really good balance and the opening and final scenes were so fucking ridiculous and amazing that that alone would have probably made the movie for me. Uh, I would have liked to seen better CGI, but at the end of the day, I think it didn't, it didn't really ruin my, the experience for me. And I love that we have someone like Iglesia who's making films today because this, this is just a great alternative for a lot of the other stuff that that's being pumped up by Hollywood. So I'm going to go ahead and say this was definitely a treat for me. I really enjoyed watching it and uh, look forward to seeing some more of uh, Iglesias' films. Dynamo. This was one get away and get caught again, maybe two get away and get caught again and tied up again away from being a classic. Um, I do feel like it took me two watches to get through this because I I feel like I I won't say it was slow at the end, uh, but uh, in the middle, but I'll say that. there was a lot of leaving and going back to the same place and having the same yeah. thing happen over and over again. Yep. Um, that said, 
this is like a, a, a no pun intended, a phenomenal trick treat to have. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> to have in the middle, a phenomenal treat. We just talked to Jeff it's Goldblum. I'm, sh- I'm, sh- I'm, All right, fair I'm enough. shaking. Uh, to have in the middle of your like Netflix queue right now. This yeah. is like, you know, when you are going through the amount of shit that has one or one and a half stars, you know, like this, this had, is worth watching like for once me, or twice. It had like four and three yeah, quarters me too. stars. Me so too. yeah. So this is a treat for sure. Raven Shizzle. This is a shitty title. You know what I mean? Like it's it's well, funny. Yeah, but it was it was. I'm sure that some American um, marketing person commandeered it and changed it. So yeah, yeah I'm that's what it looked like real. in the Spanish. Like I I don't. Well, I don't speak Spanish fluently, but that's what the translation it looked like. I don't think so because it mentioned the town name, unless that means witching. But it's Las Brujas de Zegaramurdi. Witching and bitching. Yeah, que lastima dos chicas en la cocina. Let me. I'll pump it through the the translator, but oh, continue, Raven Shadow. Yeah, I mean, a bad title. It looks kind of like a B grade or a fucking Z grade Netflix joint. But this movie's really fucking good. Uh, I mentioned before, it's an amalgamation of a lot of other flicks. I saw some Raimi in there. Saw some from Dust Till Dawn. I even saw a little bit of Goonies. What do you think of that? Didn't see no broomstick, though. I, I gotta <laughs> go back for the broomstick pot. <laughs> but no, it was a lot of fun. A little bit too long. It could have wrapped it up a little bit quicker. All right. N- never mind. It, it does translate to witching and bitching exactly. So. No <laughs> shit, really? <laughs> I've been around for 100 fucking years. <laughs> like you 300 don't, years. You don't, yeah, right. well, you don't think that I, you know. Right, I've well, learned a little bit of Spanish. Well, forget the title. Forget, you know, the subtitles ain't bad. It's a lot of fun. Treat. Check this motherfucker out. All right, Rock. Um, yeah, I uh, hit or miss on a few things that you guys already touched on, to be honest. Uh, my only bigger problems were, like, minor things that kind of stood out just to me. I don't think anybody else might get as, like, in one of my notes here, the scene with Big Chick. Oh yeah. <laughs> the one that hangs out with me is right before the digesting scene, that moment. Do you guys ever remember the old Tom Thumb movie from like the early fifties? Maybe? Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I know which one you mean. Yeah. yeah. That work of size displacement when it's lifting the smaller person. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. sequence with the kid and the big mama there. Oh yeah. Was reminiscent of that for me. It kinda of like some points, I don't know if it was intentionally looking too hokey. Or whatever, but there was just little things like that that kind of bugged me. But overall, the things that I dug were like, you, you can get me with any good car chase scene. And have you guys been around the internet any this week to see the video of the Russian guy getting the crap beat out of him by the by the dressed up cosplayers? No, no. Have you seen this video yet? There's a Russian traffic video of a guy who hits another guy's car at a traffic light and the guy starts raising holy hell at the guy in front of him while you see from a camera angle and then all of a sudden like a dude dressed as Mickey Mouse, SpongeBob SquarePants and all of a sudden they get out and they brutally kick this guy's ass and then get back in their car and leave. And it's like the most surreal experience. The whole opening sequence of this movie reminded me of that video <laughs> for a little yeah. while, but to the extreme. So yeah, it, it did, did, it, it hit where it needed to hit. The misses that were there weren't enough to make me enjoy it. And much like Wolfenstein said there, the, the dialogue came across great mm-hmm. in, 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 in subtitles, which rarely ever happens for me. Cool. So would you say it was... So, uh, treat. Treat. Nice. So there you go. All the way around. Treat. And uh, I, hate, I hate to kick you off, Rock, but we, we got an interview coming up. But um, I'm anxious to hear we will definitely have to have you on again, Matt. Yeah, friend. man. Any, if, yeah. It looks Thank like we're going to have at least an empty seat. So <laughs> Yeah, we might have an empty Start seat. Start clearing your Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, brother. My, uh, my, old, my, old, my old Mary ass sits up here and listens to you guys when I absolutely have the chance anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was honored. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope I didn't bore your audience. No, you're awesome. man. You're the man, Rock. Fucking Rock. Rock. Rock, before we let you go, though, let folks yeah. know. Uh, obviously, you're, I know you're a musician. You're, you're playing out all the time. You're, you're recording. So... Uh, let folks know where they can find your stuff. Oh, wow. You're going to bring that up. I get oh, to yeah. promote my sloppy crap. Absolutely, right? man. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's good shit, it's awesome man. shit, man. Uh, but you've actually heard it? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mark me impressed, but hey, thanks. Uh, no, yeah, I do interesting um, 
I, I just purely write from where I want to write and it's purely for me. And if other people dig it, then it's awesome. Mm-hmm. I do do a lot of cover band work and stuff like that as well to pay bills. But uh, at the end of the day, I do what I do when I record for myself and I'm kind of putting together the best of all these things to kind of get a little something together. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, you can go by and check it out. It's uh, No Man, K-N-O-W-M-A-N on Facebook and uh, take a listen. If you dig it, awesome. If not, you can tell me it's a piece of shit. I'm cool with that too. Uh <laughs> At the end of the day, though, you know, it's it's self-expression and you guys with the Deadites know how it is. And even with this show, know how it is, that, yep. you know, regardless of who's going to say what about it, it's got to come out, man. Right. You got to be creative. Yeah. Or it's fucking life. Life sucks balls. Right. Uh, you got so. you got a phenomenal voice, man. I would drive a stake through the heart of a nun holding a baby to sing like you. So. <laughs> I, I think you're full of shit, sir, but I will let you grease my pole for a couple of seconds because it makes me feel good. And that's exactly what I'll tell my wife tonight. <laughs> and you know what? I'm actually, I'm going to play, hopefully I'm not putting you on the spot here and, and you don't mind, Holy but crap. I'm going to play a little bit of Star Sludge because I dig that track. Holy shit. Yeah, I thought you were pulling my chain when you commented on that. But, uh, no, glad man. To do. Yeah. I need some recording cleanup, but like I said, I do all this myself, so it's kind of a labor of love. So, yeah, yeah f- feel free if yeah. you like it, man. Maybe somebody else will throw Rotten Tomatoes at me. <laughs> it's all it, it'll, it'll take them away from, uh, from us for a little bit, which, which we'll appreciate. Yeah, so no trash cans. Yeah, exactly. Hey, this is, I mean, I really appreciate the fact that you're going to do that and no that problem, you actually man. dig it. It's a big compliment from you because you remember back in the day when we had the radio station every yeah, Halloween – I do a song every Halloween and I yep. still do that and yep. used to throw it up on the radio station. But now I just kind of do it for the Facebook folks and, yeah. uh, and some YouTube folks. And it's, yeah, it's just a fun little thing. So, Hey, thank yeah. you. No problem. You got it, bud. Uh, anytime, man. So we're going to play out to star sludge. That'll lead us into the break and we'll be back and we're going to, uh, talk to Alex DeCampi. So rock, thanks for, for stepping up and, uh, you know, making this happen on such short notice and we'll definitely do it to again with you. Jeff Goldblum. The pleasure was all yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rock. We'll catch you soon, Thanks, bud. Guys. All right, take care, man. See you, man. See you. Bye.
All right. That's my boy Rocky and his uh, his project No Man. It's fucking great, right? I I, I mean, uh, I feel like Rocky is what people used to think like when they only like knew me as an internet entity. Like, oh, that must be what that guy sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of a 13-year-old girl, which is what I actually sound like. Well, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about Rocky later on, but we do have an interview. So let's go ahead and let's get Alex DeCampi on the line. Uh, super excited to talk to her. And she has to get up super early, so this may not be a long interview, but um, we're thankful for any time that she can give to I'm us. I'm so starstruck. I, I know you are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not taking this very well. This is, this is worse than my Garland. <laughs> and he said I'm his best friend. That's right. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us on Trick or Treat Radio. No problems. So we've we've already been gushing a little bit about you, but Alex DeCampi, if you folks aren't familiar, she's a uh, uh, she's directed several music videos, and she's also a comic book creator, writer, author, and currently the book that just released today. Uh, that's right, it came out today. Today's the twelfth, right, Alex? Yes. So the book that that came out today was uh, it's volume two of Grindhouse, and uh, it is called. Drive in, bleed out, sleigh ride, part one. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, I have to tell you, Alex, <laughs> that this uh, this is uh, this is Mars, and I have been repping for the Grindhouse series um, since I got it. it. Since I since I read the first issue of the first one, we do a segment called the Double Tap, and I double tapped it, and I think I, I think I tapped it every you know, every couple of weeks. I would tell everybody to read this. And awesome. I finally got these dudes to read this book, and they were like, I don't know why they don't listen to me. They're like, this is awesome. Why didn't we read this all along? But uh, you did something that is so hard to do. You managed to capture on every level that, like, a, a cinematic experience, um, and it, it just blew me away. You made a fan right away from the first issue. So thank you so much for coming on. This, this was... Uh, as Michael no Raymond Sh- Shadow would call it, the ball washing segment of the of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm delighted to be here. I'm not, I'm just I'm just delighted that people read my filthy comic. <laughs> no idea what was going to happen when when um, we released it, because it's just it's odd in a lot of ways. It's it's two issue stories. It, it's kind of like my own personal anthology series. It's trash. It's complete trash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it has no redeeming moral or social value. Um, but yay, I guess people love it, which is fabulous. Um, I just wanted to make something that was fun. I just finished two like really heavy duty, like action, literary graphic novels and was just like, fuck it. I want to write B Vixens from Mars now. (laughs) It must have been, it must have been slightly cathartic, I guess, after pouring, you know, from uh, quite a bit into some of the other books you've worked on to just sort of like do something trashy and, and fun like this. Yeah, and 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we we still obviously try to make it good. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but yeah, it, there's a lot of gratuitous nudity and gore, mm-hmm. um, and just you know, just comics should be fun, right? And that's what we do. I mean, we try to turn you on. We try to disgust you at least once an issue usually about two or three times (laughs) and by the end of the story we try to make you like pump pump your fist in the air and be like yeah right (laughs) because that's what comics should be they should be crazy and escapist and 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 you should not particularly want to read them in front of your parents because if they look over your shoulder and see on b fixins like page one panel three is a girl touching herself Mm um (laughs) you know (laughs) you shouldn't leave them out for your kids unless your kids are awesome (laughs) Uh, I, I I was curious, like, by the time I got to, and I'm I'm terrible. The only thing I'm worse with, uh, my my panelists will 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 back me up here. The only thing that, like, I can't even say the titles of our own songs that I wrote. Um, so excuse me, but by the time I got to, well, right coming out of uh, slave ship Atari. Yeah, yeah, and when yeah. I, when I got to the 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 rape revenge story, um, I was really like blown away by how you were able to do these type of like sleazy grindhouse stories. But because they were in a comic book, you had like, 
he had a budget, for lack of a better way to put it. And no, no, oh, yeah. nothing drove wait, that you home. You see our black exploitation one. Oh uh, my god! I can't. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> we take like everything that's awesome about black exploitation and just add more stuff. What like what came? Jet packs. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> what came first for you? Was it like the idea to do this? You know, basically this exploitation anthology. Or was it a matter that you had, like, you know, at some point you were like, you know what would be cool? Like, I spit on your grave, me, Excalibur. Well, actually, that um, the, the uh, Bride of Blood is kind of a homage to um, the, the first rape revenge film, um, which was Bergman's. Well, that's not the first verse. I'm sure there's some pedant will write in and be like, dear, yeah. dear deadites. Like, yeah. She was wait. wrong. You know, like, fine, whatever. That, I don't that, care. It's, his name's um, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> but Bergman's Virgin Spring, which you all probably know as Last House on the Left. left. Mm. So, the, and that was that was set in in some vague medieval time, and I don't know. I mean, I, I went over in my head whether, like, you know, it. I wanted to do something that was kind of removed from the now, but then part of me thought I was chickening out, like if, if she'd been like a college student or something and if she'd been raped by the football, like I could have made it nastier. Right. And I mean, it, it's pretty nasty, folks. Okay? Oh, it is for sure. Pretty nasty. It's pretty damn nasty as it is. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. <laughs> um, uh, and in some ways, I also obviously felt I had to slightly overcompensate being a female writer. I'm like, you, you guys might think I can't do this, Sit your ass down. Yeah. <laughs> and shut up. <laughs> Just sit down. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have an androgynous name, so half the people think I'm a guy anyway. Like, you know, half the reviews are like, his comics are, you know, like, this is, like, he's a really good writer, you know. I'm like, okay, cool. Don't care. <laughs> I guess. Just buy the book. <laughs> I don't care what you think I am. Buy the book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and it's a, you know it's it's an easy mistake to make if my name was like Matilda or something, it'd be like come on guys. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> um, no, I just you know as I said, I just got really tired of um, doing these heavy duty graphic novels. I'm now kind of back into that now, mm -hmm. um, although they all have much more nudity and violence in them. I've just <laughs> become infected. <laughs> I've always been the kid with the dirty mind. Like I've always been the like the first one to bring up hentai, or. <laughs> <laughs> We have hentai in the final story. Oh, God. It's... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Cannot wait. The final story, I'm not sure Dark Horse will ever publish me again after that. <laughs> it's, the sex, it's the space exploitation one. It's me doing Barbarella, but so much wronger. Oh, nice. Um, uh, with a, a lot more violence. And, oh, God, yes. Um, Ulysses Farinas is going to draw it, so, like, he can stop oh, drawing, like, little dicks in the backs of panels and draw them, like, in the front of the panel. Because, <laughs> um, <laughs> like, his backgrounds are all filled with, like, total Easter eggs and... Mm -hmm. Dicks, <laughs> <laughs> because he can. Because like, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> I'm drawing him now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, and you know, I was, I, Grindhouse One happened really fast. I was just fucking about on Twitter, like as you do, going, well, what you know, thinking about what I should start next as a project. And I just didn't have any desire to go on to like the next large project with meaning and i just said or should i write b vixens from mars and the internet was like you should write b vixens from mars mm -hmm. clearly and i grew up which nine out of ten times is a bad idea alex i'm sure that you figured that out there i listened to the internet yeah like i don't know and, if and that's it good. kind of went okay you know and i found some of the artists via the internet um twitter is kind of a wonderful medium for good if used in the right way and right. and if you block a lot of people <laughs> uh, <laughs> And um, so I, for one, I just thought up the titles first. And I, and I just I didn't want to write like six issues of Bee Vixens from Mars. I'm far from the first. I'm, I'm not even like the hundredth person to do exploitation in comics. Like so many people have done it before me. I mean, like EC Comics and the old Warren archives, like as a thing, like there you go. Right. Yeah. Um, the original copied D, like VHS tapes sure. copied from a friend of a friend who mm -hmm. rented it. It was the it was, same. It, it was yeah. in some places it was almost as hard as like. Uh, in, in you know, in full disclosure, we were far too nerdy to w to worry about this. But you know, to get alcohol at a young age, you know, you had to go up there with enough confidence to have the old lady behind the video counter think it was a good idea for this thirteen-year-old to take the hills have eyes home. Yeah, absolutely. 
but they, you know, they were, they were short, fast films. And I didn't think a lot when I was like, yeah, I'll do two issue stories. Um, so I, I'd like to say it was like a masterpiece of planning and stuff, but it, it wasn't, this was something I thought up on Twitter while arsing around one day that got approved within 48 hours of Dark Horse because gore and boobs. And then I was like, well, we'll do two issue stories because six issues of this would be really boring. Um, and then it just worked like it worked in a surprising way. And, and retailers love it because they can hand sell it. You know, they can say like, oh, well, check this out. Like here are two issues that gets you a complete story. And people mm-hmm. are like, oh, OK, I'll try that out. Um, and if you don't like it, try the next one, um, because I, one thing I think I've been fair martial arts films, like a lot of the, the, the early martial arts films were 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 grindhouse films. Right. Yeah, like, sure. Because, you know, I mean, like there was like. For a very long time, like America didn't read movies, so if it was foreign and had subtitles, it was a grindhouse film, because um, it also probably had boobs, because you know Europe. Right. Um, uh, and so yeah, like I tried as much as I could to have different artists and then change my voice for each story, so that it really it didn't feel like it was like all one kind of thing. That each story had a slightly different take on it. I mean, I think we were particularly successful in that in in Sleigh Ride in. in in the first story of what I just call Grindhouse 2.0 um, or the second season um, where it's a really spare, that's the one that's out today, folks. Um, mm-hmm. It's a really spare Western, like Northern Western horror about Christmas, <laughs> which sounds odd, but like, if you look at the amount of dialogue in that comic, seriously there's there's almost none there's like a couple of pages where people are talking to each other but mostly it's just people being scared uh, and as a writer ironically when you tell an effective story with as little dialogue as possible you feel really successful yeah like I, a good the better the better a writer you are the less you need to write yeah absolutely we we were looking through the the issue that dropped today and Three words, I think, uh, made made yeah. Dynamo pee his pants. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I mean, <laughs> this you, you are writing in my world right now. Not not just horror, but like I'm a, I'm a big you know sleaze exploitation fanatic, and you you know I, just I feel like I'd seen it all. So for me to be like flipping through, you know, uh, scrolling through a PDF, enjoying it, reading it, and to actually get like a chill, um, I don't think that. You know, anyone uh, who knows me, yeah. I don't think anyone who knows me knows that I can pay you a bigger compliment that you scared me. <laughs> it doesn't happen a lot. You you aborted us. That that's all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Um, that's that's a particularly visceral bit of horror right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it it gets uh, and one of the fun things about that story for me was, you know, a lot of horror is creating the monster. Um, and a lot of American horror in specific is creating the monster. Um, and sometimes you get so excited about the monster, you actually forget about the rest of the story. And that's how bad horror films are mm-hmm. made. Right. Um, uh, but here, like, the, the, the sort of corporate mascots we use as bad guys, reason 300 billion why this will never be made into a movie because i'll be hit with a c and d you can see from fucking space (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) unfortunately it would make a great movie oh yeah um uh but you know that's like a monster no one's ever used before and and Part of horror, I, th- I think, like most horror writers that I talk to, except Paul Tobin, who's amazing but not squeamish at all. Everybody else is really squeamish. Like Steve Niles, very squeamish. You know, um, which is interesting. Jonathan Mayberry, quite squeamish. Um, so all of us are like very are quite sensitive little flowers, believe it or not. And <laughs> even though you think we're all roughy tufty horror writers, and part of that is because we write effective horror by taking things that that just you know that sort of get a little bit off, like 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 the um, the deadly sins that come after the people in, in, in Sleigh Ride um, and then make them really uncomfortable. Um, so it's not just like a slasher or something like that. It's something that, that's very modern and unusual and hasn't been done before and also, you know, creeps out an exploitation fan who's seen quite a lot of it, if not all of it. <laughs> um, so that's, that's, that's always exciting. Yeah, that you must have known that that was going to get people right. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that if if anyone out there has yet to check it out, definitely go check this issue out. It's it's pretty phenomenal. And it had three grown men basically like, you know, kind of shivering in, in their yeah, in their like, chairs while reading it yeah. together. Various points. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I, I, I love the mascot idea too. Like I, I think it fits in with again, like you've really nailed that like uh, that grindhouse element that there was a good mixture of like mavens of trash making these films and a good mixture mm-hmm. of like you know intelligent artists that were making these films because that was the only way they were going to get a movie made so they tried to yeah. you know ch- chuck hole as much smarts or, or subversive ideas as they possibly could into this trash and i, I exactly I, and that's why i love grindhouse that's why everyone's like why is the chick do you like grindhouse and and it was that so much of it, especially in the 60s and 70s, were made by these really subversive filmmakers. And, yeah, like, some of it was just complete trash, admittedly. Right. Like, Galaxina, complete trash. Exactly. I mean, Hot it... Chick, complete trash. Right. Um, but a lot of the other stuff, like, there were some really interesting issues being brought up. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of female heroes in them. Yeah, for sure. E- even, if, even if some of the politics of them, especially if you go into a lot of the love them as i may like i'm I'm not tricked by you know what their what their uh intent was but like mm-hmm. you know even like the you know the women in prison stuff that the the feminism i think was kind of a a, a post thought as opposed to the the intent of it yeah. but i mean definitely there's no arguing the fact that for uh for a genre that gets you know as a whole of like horror and exploitation that maybe is as misogynistic as it as it is you know, told like there's probably not another genre that has as many strong female characters, mm-hmm. or at least at least weapon wielding <laughs> female characters. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it, as 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 we both said, it's a huge, huge, huge genre, and so many films were made um, that it's hard to like pin it down as like it's this or it's that. Right. Um, and that's why it's such a good playground for a series like Grindhouse because I can, you know, there's an almost unlimited number of things I can write. <laughs> right. Um, I am probably going to stop after this. Like, I'm talking with Dark Horse about them potentially taking it over. Hmm. Um, and then I'd come in and do a story every so often. But then other writers, I mean, I'd love to see, like, what Tim Seeley does for a two issue Grindhouse story. I'd love That'd to see Steve great. Niles do one. I'd love to see, like, Joe Hill do a proper, like, exploitation story. Um, and it's a it's kind of a low commitment fun thing. And two issues is just it's just a nice length for a story because you have enough space for some subtlety and subplots and, and development. But it you know it, it get you have to get down to business very quickly. And that's another thing I'm particularly proud of with Slay Ride is we get down to business. Oh so yeah, fast. for sure. On four panel pages, like those panel, those pages are not like right. busy pages. No. There's a. We could probably get like three episodes out of out of all the stuff that I would love to talk to you yeah, about. So yeah. I know we I know you have uh, you have an early morning, so I don't want to keep you too too long. But um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, and I'm sure you've been asked ad nauseum about it, but one of the things that we talk about fairly often here on the show is is the advent of digital media nowadays, and mm-hmm. you know, with obviously with digital comics and and the whole state of uh, digital music and film and everything it's 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 a completely different world out there and you know and supposedly you know and you're hailed as sort of one of the pioneers if not the pioneer of, of digital comics so i just one of one of there, yeah. were, there were many of us sure yeah. sure um but i was hoping you could talk a little bit uh, about that and how you feel it impacts uh the industry if 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 it does because you know as I actually bought um, I bought Grindhouse Volume One. It was one. It was the first comic I ever purchased. Um, I just got a new iPhone Six Plus, so it's bigger, and I can hey. you know I can read. So I, I I bought the Kindle app, and he got his iPhone Six Plus, and he read it in his Corvette. <laughs> no, as his, <laughs> as his butler was driving him about I'm, town. I'm just trying to make a point because on my old on my old phone, I would not I did not want to read comics because it was too small, yeah. but. This is, you know, sort of the the in between between a phone and a tablet, and and to me it looks it looked gorgeous, and 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 you know I sort of I enjoyed reading it, and also 
Um, you know, so I got the volume one and read that and I enjoyed it. So I think I'm going to do a little bit more with, with digital, but I just was hoping you could speak a little bit about how you feel it's, it's impacted the industry, I guess, without getting into a huge conversation and, 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 you know, because this is something that we, we talk about a lot, but we typically just, you know, just talk about it amongst ourselves. But as someone who, who is in the, the, the industry, I'd love to hear more about it. I mean, it, it's digital has tremendous storytelling potential. I mean, I, I, I love both digital and print. When I read comics right now, because I spend all day when I'm writing in front of a screen, I tend to just go get a paper book. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I'm really broke, and I tend to only read comics that people give me, even though there are a ton more I want to read. Yeah. Um, so um, I put my computer away and like sit in my bed with my book. Um, so I like books. I also like digital. I, I love the story as a as a creator. I love the storytelling potential of digital because every panel is a page turn. Mm. Uh, you know, normally in a print comic. Um, the odd numbered page, the even numbered page is where you do your big surprise. Yep. Um, the movement of, of the importance of digital as a sales outlet for comics and, and how much they now drive sales is visible in things like the way that the double page splashes are, 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 are slowly disappearing from comics. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's funny, a friend of mine, Matt Southworth and I are doing a spy series, Matt Southworth, who did the first season of Stumptown which has hands down the best double page spread on earth. Um, <laughs> you should look it up. It's amazing. Cool. Um, Greg Rucker wrote it. it it's, it's, it's very good. Um, and Matt's art's stunning. Um, but we're doing it as like unabashedly, like the, the first issue is almost all double page spreads because we don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 because I have, you know, I've created Valentine. Like I, like I don't have to prove my digital credo. Like I can do right, both. I, right. Like it's fun. It's fun. Comics are fun. Telling stories in different ways are fun. And to say like, oh, well, you have to do it one way or you have to do it the other way or one way is better than the other. It, it's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. I mean, three panel strips are an amazing way to tell a story. I was I've, I always talk about how much I love the um, I, I, from Coast City Comics, the, the comic book shop in, in, in Portland, Maine, that I love. Yay, Tristan. <laughs> um, uh, I bought um cheaply a damaged copy of um uh x9 which uh the old archie goodwin al williamson uh spy strip that ran in the like six, the late 60s early 70s mm -hmm. and it's amazing i learned so much from like a three like a serial three panel story you can learn so much about storytelling by looking at every panel as a page turn on digital and by changing your pacing there and, and 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 like and the transitions you can have on digital like the, which are which are um where you start using more like cinematography filmmaking framing like storyboard framing um to tell a story and then you know there's just making beautiful pages of a print comic um i think we're still we're still very much in the in the in the, like the kitty end of the pool as far as digital comics mm -hmm. because um i did a really long cbr interview about this with mm -hmm. steve morris who's lovely um but you know publishers aren't going to leave their wives and their wives are print, right? And the retailers. Yep. They like digital because it earns the money without them having to do very much. Yeah. But until you have, until you have, I think it's going to be a game company. Maybe Amazon, because Ron Peratz is at, at Amazon, and he he like that's a dude who knows what's up. Um, but either Amazon or a game company is going to come along and teach everybody what digital comics are, and the way they're going to do it is they're going to have a writer. They're going to have an artist or artists and you know line art colors and um, etc. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a coder. Yep. And finally, we're going to start seeing what digital comics can really do in terms of things like looped GIF backgrounds, uh, you know, looped music like 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 video games have. Like if if you walk away from like a boring bit of Call of Duty to go to the bathroom and come back, the same music's playing. Right. Exactly. And it just kind of yeah. loops along, right. you know. Um, uh, you know, transitional sound effects between panels. Like, there's so much you can do that's like they're they're really bad motion comics, and I, I I will not mention them by name, even though I've seen them and they make my my soul like curl up in kind of Lovecraftian horror. <laughs> um, but there are there are really good things that you can do that enhance the reader's experience that don't take 
uh, the control of time away from them because where digital comics don't work is when they start talking to you or making odd sounds when you're not there yet <laughs> yeah. right. or like after you're already past that and then you just want to punch them yeah. um, or the or the effects just look really shonky like someone's like cut something out of a background and moved it around like a like a like a little paper marionette and you're just like no no paper dolls um, but there, there's so much to do and and it's unfortunately it's going to take a budget it's going to take a dedicated coder like gee why can't a coder do it for love well coders pay rent too mm -hmm. um you know why can't writers and artists do it for love mm -hmm. the go, supermarket doesn't take go love. listen to last week we talked that's all we talked about <laughs> yeah money money right. let's talk about checks more more like we talked about hungry hungry yes <laughs> yes the um, uh, the interesting so, yeah. thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. I, I just want to make a. Up, like I, you know, I, I, like all forms of storytelling are valid. They're all exciting. Um, digital is exciting, in part because um, it allows people anywhere to get into comics, and you don't have to go to a store. Like you don't have to go to a temple to love our subculture now. Mm -hmm. right. You can just find it via your phone. And that, as somebody whose whose future income depends on selling more comics, makes me happy. Um, I love the temples, you know, yeah. some of the some of the stores are, are, are places that are very, very close to my heart. But, you know, the fact is some of us just don't live anywhere near stores and it's better than giving Amazon your money. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> the the interesting thing about that is comics is comic books are is one of the mediums where you sort of go at your own pace. Like, I guess when you watch a movie, you're watching how the director you know, like the pace he wants you. But if you want, you can. Yeah, a five minute scene in a movie is always a five minute scene. Yeah, right. Exactly. And that's one of Unless the. Unless it's a scene like Basic Instinct where everybody slows it down to look like, for hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then sometimes it's a 10 minute scene. I'm sure no one on this show has been uh, guilty of that, Michael Raven Shadow. No. Let's go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so. But uh, but it's very interesting, and it's it's interesting that you say that because you know there's been some motion comic stuff, but I, I I agree that I don't think it's been done the right way, and and I think digital comics, I think in order to really be a thing, it needs to sort of step up and do something a little bit different. Yeah. So it's interesting that you mention that, and and I think it's interesting because I, I I I have dabbled in the video game sphere, so I I know exactly what you're talking about, and. Um, I, you know, that's something I'd like to see sort of happen. I'd, I'd be really interested in seeing uh, a little bit more of that. So it's sort of a mix between a comic book and a film in, in a way, you know? Right. Uh, I mean, What's it's a comic book and a video game where it's like a choose your own adventure comic book. I, yeah. I mean, I don't That'd see awesome. why video game companies don't do this as like, you know, six monthly releases because the cost is so much less than a video game. Right. And, you know, because all you need is a writer, an artist and a coder. And then you just pay them to do the shit and you get this like choose your own adventure game mm -hmm. that can be just a quick hit in between and then you can build on that like maybe at certain points like the character just stops and then you have like version two which takes off from various like you have to get to parts of the story to let then do the expansion module right. i mean it's 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 so obvious why is nobody doing this right <laughs> it's it's crazy Give me money. <laughs> and it, it's funny too like because again i don't want to like you know there are definitely some motion comics that i've liked but i feel like we've gone all this way to go back to the, almost go back to something that doesn't look that much different than the old 60s Marvel cartoons that was essentially like moving the panels, you know, literally moving paper panels around the, the, the frame of the, the shot. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of shifty, shifty shoulder walking still happening in motion comics and stuff. So it, it's, <laughs> it's, fu it's funny that, you know, for a medium that's gone so far and, and gone along with all these other technologies and been around longer and made so many different, you know, advancements that when they try to bring other technologies in, it almost is a step backwards for the, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's stuck. And, and, and almost all of the digital comics offerings currently are formatted so they can be printed as trade paperback. So right. every screen you see is half a page. Right. And that's, you know, we're never going to get further by doing that. That's this. That's an unhealthy compromise because because publishers don't want to leave their wives. Right. <laughs> exactly. The I, I I wanted to jump into some of your your video work, but do you have time, or should we should we? Yeah, I've got time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Just wanted to I've make sure. I open the, uh, the 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 slightly mediocre Belgian <laughs> bottle of Belgian beer. I've got. Nice. Okay. So. <laughs> So it, it looks like just in looking at, at some of the videos you've done, it looks like you were doing that before you got heavy into comics, or at least... Around the same time. I think my okay. first video, my first proper video, which was the um, 
the black and white cartoon one. Jeez, I can't even remember the name of it now. Um, oh, Flip Flipron, Flipron um, yeah. Raindrops, yeah. Of All the Dead. Yep. Um, which got shown at, like South by Southwest and a whole bunch of places. That yeah. came out around the same time as Smoke Ash Smoke started coming out. Okay. Um, and then you know, at, at a certain point, um, in around two thousand, the end of two thousand and seven, my father became very sick with cancer. So I left London, moved back to Northern New England to take care of him and my mom as he got sicker and then passed away. Mm. Um, and the video directing career slowed down a lot because I wasn't living in major cities. I mean, I'd still do like a video a year or a couple of videos a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was living up here, I was doing videos for like Frank Black. So yeah. Right. And, and showed that, you know, I wasn't completely sloughing it. Um, <laughs> but it's, and then I had a kid um, and mislaid the husband. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm not living in LA or New York, so I'm not doing that hustle. So I'm not doing as many videos. It's something I really miss. Yeah. And some, and obviously at some point I'd like to direct a feature, but it may, you know, it may never happen. So I've just got, I've got so many stories coming out next year. Well, not mm -hmm. so many, like four. Um. That I, I, and and they, I'm also I'm so excited about all of them. Like they're really amazing, and none of them have been announced yet. Nice. <laughs> um, Can't wait. Uh, it's just. You know, I, I just I, I'm really excited about that. And then hopefully, like, you know, life will turn around and people will be like, God, she's really good at telling stories. I wonder if she could do a film or like a digital, yeah. some funky digital comic thing or whatever. And and I'll say yes, even though I live in a strange part of the world that has nothing to do with the media industry. <laughs> right. And I like it that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we make it a CD out that way. So I guess there's something there's something going there you on. Go. Yeah. yeah. See, I call this place the Stephen Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when, when we come across a big sum of money, we'll make sure to share it with you, and yeah. and we can uh, yeah. maybe you can do a video for us. Or yeah, something. No, you know what's amazing, Alex, is that you fit into like there. There are a lot of in there. It's a very this is gonna this isn't so much of a question as like a you know a a, a, a Chris Farley. Remember when you did that? That was cool. <laughs> um, yeah. But like you fit into like and I, and I didn't I didn't know this until I was doing a lot of research for this because I was just you know had come in as a fan of your comic work. As all the artists that I love deal in multiple medias, you know, whether like all over the board, whether it's, you know, all the stuff that Zombie does or even a couple of my favorite pro wrestlers do uh, comics and have podcasts and do these other things. Do you find it liberating to be like a, a multimedia artist or is it a is it a creature of, you know, I, I, is it? I think you it's have really these cool. skills. I'm glad that you understand it because some people, like a lot of people, are like, "Well, well, like, people can't even understand that I wrote a My Little Pony story and I write Grindhouse." They're like, "How right. do you do both of these things?" Like, I'm not a boring motherfucker, asshole. Like, <laughs> um, the film has has really informed how I tell comics, mm -hmm. uh, how I tell stories in comics because I would I would draw my own storyboards. Like, you'll never see them because they're all really badly drawn, but you can read them. Like, you, they're not pro quality, but they're definitely readable. Like, a, 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 a a uh, cinematographer could come in and be like, yeah, okay, I totally, un I understand what we're doing next shot and blah, right. blah, blah. Um, so that, as th you know, that it all, like it all helps each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, if, if I would, I would strongly recommend to anyone if they have interests other than their primary interest to just pursue them because it all, like any kind of creation helps all the other sorts of right. creation and informs it. Um, but people won't necessarily understand because people like, People like creators to be in niches. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They it's... like you to be a horror writer, mm. or you know, like a horror writer who also writes kids stuff occasionally, and um, you know, and can direct music videos and edit film and stuff. Right. Like that's just that's just too much. That's too, that's much. too much. And it's it's funny so too because it... to, sorry, you know, it 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 it's fine. If people just need to kind of be cool with with the right. fact that we are all much more complex and 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 multifaceted yeah than the internet likes to make us right well you have to in 2014 going into 2015 because i can tell you that we sold a bunch of cds up front when we put them out at the show but th all those 300 people have had them for the next you know <laughs> for the next bunch of years and, and we wouldn't have sold a single other one if it wasn't for this podcast you know, so you, you almost have to get out there and do different things and, and cross lines because there's so much noise out there. You have to make as much noise as you can in different camps. 
Although every time people are like, the author must also be a brand, I kind of cry silent tears inside. Yeah, no, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I have to update the blog. Oh, I just want to write my stories. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think it's, I mean, we're, we're certainly fans of, of that, of, of sort of the, the multimedia um, effect. And we... we uh, we talked to Kari Andrews uh, not too long ago. Oh, well, like, love him, love yeah. him so much, love all his work. Yeah. yeah, and he's he had such a positive attitude, and like it just was so cool just hearing. You know, like he's obviously done feature films, and he he does he writes and 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 draws his own comics, and it's just it was just very refreshing, and and also with you just to see people getting out there and doing what they want to do and not being pigeonholed as as this or that, and. You know, it's Harry Andrews did the cover of one of my favorite CDs, which is um, the Beta Band. The Beta Band, Zeros. yeah, one yeah, of my favorite CDs go. too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I forgot. Like we we never got around I saw, to it. I saw, I saw the Beta's farewell gig in London, which was immense. Yeah, because um, I can't remember the names of everybody in the band because I can on on a good day I can barely remember my own name. <laughs> right, but, understood. Um, who's Majiggy who sings is also a drummer, and they just brought out a second drum set on stage in the last like. 15 minutes was just like epic drum battle. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> <That's the best. laughs> I actually found the beta band because that cover stood out to me. Like I, you know, like I, I probably should have had my, my, you know, 13 year old goth girl, Brit pop kid <laughs> card taken away for not knowing who they were. But like, um, I was like, you know, I can blame Kyrie Andrews for finding an awesome band. Cause that cover like jumped off the shelves. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it's very clear that you, you are very good at telling stories. And, and mm-hmm. you know, I think hopefully we get to see you do some more film work because just even tell, like even a music video where there's no spoken dialogue, uh, you know, I, I think really you, ha- you have to be a, a, an ultimate storyteller to be able to, to tell a story, you know, with that through, through just, you know. Silent film, man. Exactly, a, yeah. A music video is a film with a prearranged soundtrack. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that that right there lends itself perfectly. And, you know, hopefully, I don't know, maybe one of these anthologies, you know, the, you know, like, like Kari had did the ABCs of Death, you know, maybe maybe there's a, an opportunity for, for one of those anthologies down the road. I would love can, it. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. I think I need to publish a few more things because I'm still like a very small minnow in a very large pond. So hopefully after... <laughs> A couple of the things I do next. Uh, hopefully, Grindhouse season two will help. Hopefully, the Archie versus Predator series I'm doing. Oh, that's you! <laughs> oh that's my me. god, that's me! It's not Archie Horrorverse. We created a new Archie verse for oh. I'm calling the Archie Splatterverse. Oh um, my god, <laughs> I can't wait. Yes, hopefully that will help. Hopefully, uh, the, some of the the, the the as yet unannounced things I'm doing next year will help. Um, none of them are like DC Marvel stuff. I've they, they they seem allergic to me, um, <laughs> it, which you know I guess I'll then just like end up with creator own stories where I own everything, which um, is you know pretty awesome at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. And who knows? I mean, maybe yeah. some maybe some you know some executive producer out there would be like, oh, we got to turn this into a film, and sure. you know, or hey, I could be the next Robert Kirkman. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I I will say that Archie <laughs> Archie and Predator is probably a bigger deal to me than Alex DeCampi and Amanda Palmer. And that was, that was a pretty big deal. <laughs> That's a pretty me. big deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, Archie you're... Predator is going to be a lot of fun. I couldn't believe it when my editor was like, do you want to do this? And I'm like, fuck yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people, uh, people were like, how did you get that gig? I'm like, they just have asked me. Yeah. That's... I'll tan, you know, <laughs> and then, and then it just became this huge thing. Like I, we also didn't expect it would be such a thing at New York comic con. And cause no one really announced anything else. And, mm-hmm. Everybody also agreed that Archie versus Predator is completely nuts. And given the Grindhouse stories I've done, I can pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be really wrong. It's it's drawn by Fernando Ruiz, who's one of the, the great classic Archie artists. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to have that really light, like cute Archie, like pretty Archie style to it. <laughs> Up until kids start getting flayed. <laughs> <laughs> Can and Fernando was so on for it. He's just like... <laughs> He's like, he, he, like he's so excited to draw Predator. The yeah, the, we're super excited to to see that yeah. because I think even before we even knew that you were working on it, like there was a lot of talk about it. Like, yeah. oh my god, like how are these two going to coexist? This is going to be nuts. So you must be, or you, when the you heard about guys it, letting me destroy everything. Like nice. they're just like, do it, do it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> they're like the worst older brothers in the world. They're the ones like, come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, yeah. come on. It's awesome. okay. 
Cannot wait. Cannot wait. That's Very phenomenal. <laughs> so, so the um, and you have a lot of other stuff coming up in 2015. The the thing that seems like it seems like you're, I mean, to us anyways, it seems like you're on the verge. Like you're you're right on the threshold of like superstardom. And and I mean, obviously, in talking to you and and knowing your work, you know, we we hope that that happens because, I mean, it it. It sucks to, to credit card company. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Them too. Yeah. yeah, they've been knocking on our doors yeah, for a send while. Yeah, just send you a bill our way. We're, we're not paying either of them, but Red letters. Gotta love them. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, it seems like you're just on the verge, and you know, I think if just one of these things takes off, like that, you know, that could could help you so basically this is our plea to everyone yeah. listening out there I, is i haven't done wolfie i'm sorry i haven't done yeah. this I, everyone will know in 125 episodes i i've never done this i've certainly said check out that people are on but if if, if the the few the strong the proud of, of the trick-or-treat radio heads and the and the deadite secret twilight society is listening um go to wherever you get comics um and pick this up i am positive that if you get um Volume one, uh, any I I say if you can track it down in in floppies, but if you get the the trades, um, or get it digitally, or however you get it, go pick up volume one of Grindhouse or the volume that dropped today, uh, Drive In Bleed Out. Um, take a picture of it, put it on the fib, or send it to one of us personally, and uh, I'll send you our record. Um, if you have our record, you can make oh. me Raven Shadow do slash fiction again, or uh, <laughs> or like you know we'll be at your disposal. The only other time I've done this is when we had Matt uh, Matt Kennedy from Astron Six on in, in Manboard, um, because I am you know not everybody is gonna like everybody thing that we have on. We at the table have all different tastes, but I am positive if you like this show, listen to this show and dig on our music, you are gonna love this comic series. Mm-hmm. So you know get it, take a picture of it, send it to us. And uh, you know, I'll send you the big scary monster, or or you know, read something ridiculous, or whatever whatever yeah, you want if, us to do. We'll be you, at your disposal. Yeah, if you already own the big scary monster, we'll we'll do something else. We'll yeah. Leave. So those three people don't send us a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I should get you guys to do a song for like one of the grindhouse stories. Uh, I would I would be honored. Yeah, we, we would do it in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't, I can't even breathe ooh. right now. So <laughs> <don't> even... <laughs> oh, oh, hmm, hmm. Yeah. We but, might have to talk more about this yeah. because I like. I like crazy ideas, and this is this, this is definitely a good crazy idea. Yeah, Absolutely, I like it. Yeah, I like it. The tiny white who does all of our music, who unfortunately was very excited to be here, and and uh, Monsanto and Endeavors kept him away. Um, <laughs> well, actually, it was Sorbet Endeavors, but like, he, he, was, he was busy. Same um, thing. Yeah, um, is is a mad genius, and uh, has been secretly like you know you could probably just steal some of his tracks, and they would fit perfect with your brilliant comic anyway, because you you seem to be. Uh, Drinking from the same glass of exploitation tea, so there you go. <laughs> Very exciting. So, uh, what we'll do is, since we've had you for almost an hour here, and I don't want you yeah. to be a complete zombie in the morning, uh, maybe what we can do is, uh, before, uh, maybe we can have you on again down the line when yeah. you have something to promote, um, you know, or or if you just want to come on and review an exploitation movie, you know, maybe terrific. that's something we could work out too. Mm-hmm. So. Sure. Well, I mean, we can also I can come back on when um, Archie Predator comes out. That would be Perfect. tremendous. Or we can come on after the the final grindhouse story with all the sex in it. And <laughs> yes, because we're a little bit light on the sex, and my other's like, "Are you sure there's enough sex in these?" And I'm like, "Wait till the last one." Yeah, <laughs> you're saving yourself, right? <laughs> we're going out with a bang. That's all I can say. <laughs> nice. Many, many bangs, different <laughs> kinds of bangs, tentacle bangs. Nice. <laughs> I, I I asked my barber for tentacle bangs. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> Watch out! They charge extra for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Double for a reach around. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was the dirtiest. <laughs> it's true, and that, and that's saying something on this show. Yeah, it really is actually. <laughs> what what I want to do is I want to direct people to your big cartel. It's alexdecampi.bigcartel.com. And uh, we tend to put our money where our mouth is, or maybe it's the other way around. Is uh, it our mouth where yeah. our money is? Yeah. But, it's, it's but why any- I have those cold sores. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, uh, last week after we uh, confirmed Alex, I went and bought uh, Smoke Ashes. So the um, this is Man, that's gorgeous. Yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is the, the limited case hardback edition. Um, just arrived today, so I didn't, unfortunately, unfortunately didn't have a chance to read it. But this is a gorgeous book, Alex. And uh, I think... 
I would imagine that if if uh, Grindhouse isn't someone's bag, or or even if they've already read Grindhouse, this is probably a great place to start, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean that that this is me. Like it's it's also violent. It's also got it's also funny in places. It's a little bit more serious than Grindhouse, but it you know I I tend to write very violent, sexy <laughs> stuff with yep. like a thick thick vein of black humor in it. Yeah. Um, so. If that's the sort of thing you like, you'd probably like like my other stuff. We have also got Valentine, which is a little bit, you know, on the tamer side. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not. It, it's 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 a it's it's the digital comic. Um, it's out every Wednesday from Comicsology. We have fourteen episodes done, and I think we've got the first eight up, wow. uh, and a new one every week. Nice. And it's ninety nine cents um, an episode. The first one's free because hey, drug dealers know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and that's that's like if you like fantasy books, um, it's a su- supernatural fantasy thriller. And mm-hmm. believe me, you will not see the twists coming. Nice, <laughs> good. I'll have to check that out as well. And uh, so the big cartel, I imagine that's probably the the biggest bang for your buck if people shop there. Yes. Okay. Yes. Also, so, also, it gets things out of my garage, which makes my family happy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so go to you Alex... know the merch pile. <laughs> oh yeah, I I have the merch pile here, so I know very well what that's like. Uh, and the family gets at the side eye, and they're like, "Is that is that gonna, like the? Is that gonna look soon? We're trying." We're trying. <laughs> So alexdecampi.bigcartel.com. Go check that out and, and um, make sure you get... I've got a short preview of, of um, Sleigh Ride on my website right now, which is if you oh, just nice. go to alexdecampi.com, mm-hmm. it has links to the Big Cartel um, nice. and okay, it has cool. a four-page preview of, um, of Sleigh Ride on it. Awesome. Cool. And then also, so yeah, I guess that the home base is alexdecampi.com. You, you know, links for everything there. And also check out check out Alex's Patreon. Uh, we talked about that a little bit last week, and yeah. uh, some of our p- other podcasting friends have have done this to great effect. So, if you dig what Alex is doing, you know, giving to her Patreon will help her do more of it and and less stress in her life. So, yeah. if you dig what Alex is doing, uh, go check out the Patreon. Uh, go st- buy stuff from her big cartel. Um, you know, just share it, you know, let people know about it because yeah. it's, it's really fantastic and, stuff. And, and whatever you get, you know, we'll, we'll send you stuff or we'll act like monkeys or we'll do whatever, you know, we'll come, we'll come play music at, at your, at your house. If you, if you, God forbid, <laughs> if you want that, the people we live with don't want us to play music there, but, yeah. um, you know, whatever you do, send us, send us some that it doesn't have to be Grindhouse, but I guarantee that you as a fan of the show, you know, will, will love Grindhouse, but any of, any of her works, please just send us a picture We'll send you some stuff. That's how confident I am that you're going to love, you're going to dig this stuff. And, you know, playing it forward, speaking of Patreon, I, I found out about your stuff, Alex, from the, the great John Suntress uh, mm. when you're on Word Balloon. So there you go. He's a great guy. I love him. So, and uh, Alex, you're pretty much Alex DeCampi everywhere on social media. So yeah. uh, it's awesome having a really unusual name. Like, yeah. I hated it when I was a little kid. I just wanted to be called Tracy or Jane or something. <laughs> no shit. Um, but now I love it because obviously all the Twitter handles and websites and everything. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's good to have because <laughs> we, you know, we we tried to get the Deadites everywhere, but it's you know obviously a pretty common uh, band name as, as we've yeah. found out. We've had it the longest though, and we'll we'll rumble anyone who thinks differently. But yeah. um, but We're talking to you, Deadites UK, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or Deadites suck, yeah, uh, as it were. <laughs> so, uh, all right, Alex. Well. We are going to allow you to get some sleep because you've been such a, a trooper and hanging out with us for for an hour. And uh, like Dynamo no said, really fun, cool. And well, I'm glad you had fun and and were able to to you know pop open that beer and, and you know have a little little fun before you go to bed. But yeah. uh, everyone, go check out Alex's work. And uh, where did all the beer go? <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Yeah, yeah. that's his favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> So everyone, go check out Alex's work. Alex, we can't thank you enough for joining us here Thanks on Circuit so Treat Radio tonight, and we'll definitely be in touch. We'll we'll talk about some some music stuff and and uh, getting you on again when when Archie uh, versus Predator drops. That'd be ace. Have a good night. Thank you. Take night care, night. Alex. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think we need to hose Don down. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, if if if. It's all over the- 
Oh, uh, so we went off like a if, waterway. If you, gu- if you guys are listening out there, like I mean it, like, uh, like Andrea, this is the comic that you could have wrote, like. Uh, sexy Librarian, if you're out there, you will adore this stuff. Valentine, Sexy Librarian sounds right up your alley. Um, you know, pick something up and uh, please, please just send us a thing. And, you know, if you if you want to hear more felt fiction, we could probably uh, round up a Monster Zero to... Uh, no, actually, I'm taking that off the table. There will never be any more felt fiction. Uh, yeah. But if you... If, if you slash want, fiction. Yeah, if you want to hear more Neon Maniac slash fiction... Um, if you're like Wolfie and you apparently want to hear uh, Dynamo and Tiny White slash fiction, um, you know, just let us just let us know. And uh, I I am backing this. Uh, you could put it on on your shelf next to your Manborg for things that Dynamo told you that you that is going to change your life. And the fact that how did something this fucking awesome exist and I don't have it? So right. you will love it. You'll dig it the most. <laughs> The actually, let's go to a break. I, we'll catch up on the chat. Yeah, right I now need there. a break. Yeah, you do need a, <laughs> you need you need a long break. So we'll we're gonna cut to a commercial and we'll be back in uh, just a moment. There we go. In a world without adventures and VHS, the book <laughs> comes a world with adventures and VHS, the book. Every journey begins in the mind. We're in, we're in trouble, Gary. This is highly illegal. In 2013, Noel Miller embarked on a series of VHS adventures that shook the world of podcasting to its very core. He's the kid everyone used to pick up. Now, through the power of the written word, he's back and ready to take those adventures to a whole new level. Described by its overzealous publisher as high fidelity for the video rental generation. And described by Mondo Movie Podcast Dan Audi as bringing the half-forgotten days of 80s video rental stores vividly back to life. It's moving, it's working, it's doing itself, it's working by itself. Adventures on VHS is an immersive trip through a long-forgotten era through some of the films that defined it. An experience to terrifying for words. Available to buy now from adventuresofvhs.com with a whole host a fabulous full color edition showcasing the glorious cover art of the VHS era. It's the story of one man's disturbing romance with an obsolete format and the weird and wonderful films that shaped his love of movies. And if this person is listening to my voice, I urge him in the name of law and order to desist from this one man crusade. Adventures of VHS, the book. Buy it today. I'm going to kiss you. Your very life may just depend on it. Raymond Shell's locked out. <laughs> uh, Dynamo spent uh, a moment in the bathroom himself. No, sir. No, sir. Don't ruin it. <laughs> I'll tell you who's jealous right now is Tiny, tiny White. Yeah. Tiny Thaddeus <laughs> White. He's very jealous. Yeah, I don't Hopefully know. Hopefully where... he was streaming it live. He was streaming From it From Wegmans. Big, big sorbet. Problem at Wegmans time. <laughs> Big sorbet problem. 
Uh, well, our streak continues, guys. Yeah, we've never had a a, a bullshit guest in the history no. of the show. How no. is that possible? Well, because we have bullshit hosts. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the bullshit's on this side of the mic. Oh, she's sh- fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, she was very cool. She's uh, dirty too. She swore a lot. And I and I mean and I mean it. Like like I I, I can't say it enough. Like uh, if you love this show, you will love Bride of Blood. You will love Be Vixens. Like all that stuff is awesome. The la- the last story is about a a, a, a group of a Vespa riding girl biker gang. Like you will dig it. It's like you know it's what? like in that Evil wasn't Dead. that wasn't in my. I had Volume One and it wasn't in there. I think that Volume One. I, I think that there is. I think their setup is double features. So I think that you'll have Be Vixens and I Slave had, Girls. Yeah, that's what, yeah. and then the next one will be. Uh, I think Bride of Blood was the middle story. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering. So, Bride of Blood, I, I think, was my favorite. Um, but that last one, uh, the last one, obviously, I remember mm-hmm. the most because it was last. Like, um, you know, go go to your store, get the get the floppies of this and back issue. Like, you know, I know Rubber Chicken had them all. That's where I bought them. Um, Apparently, uh, the 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 shop that Raven Shadow frequents doesn't. <laughs> no, it's all sold out. Yeah. Oh, it's sold out, or or it, you know, it may okay. be because there is yeah. for the me's of the world that coming out was exciting. You know, like we, I know I have a very small. Wait, you came out? You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <the, the, laughs> Years might, ago, <laughs> you might have been too busy dressing like Elvis and wearing a mask, <laughs> but it was. <laughs> like it, it was a long time ago. Yeah. And I think too that once once Psycho Patrick like hit me like a bullet train, literally, you know, it was all downhill or uphill depending on which way you're looking at. But for stuff like this, for the dynamos of the world, uh, and I'm sorry uh, for those who <laughs> who are out there, tell your retailer to order it because yep. let's face it, they're only going to order what people either subscribe to or or buy. Yeah, they don't. And for every X Men or Batman, which people are going to buy regardless, something like this, maybe listen to the show or check your previews and tell your retailer, "Hey, give me a fucking copy." And they'll thank you because, like, like Alex said, this is very sellable in hand. You know, you're not, yeah, yeah. you're not. If if you know your customer base and you show this to somebody, they're going to leave with it. Like, there's no ifs ands or buts about it. You know, and and. Not every like podcasting is a very very new endeavor in, in a lot of people's eyes. People after all this time, people still don't understand it, and so maybe they didn't have the opportunity to hear her on Word Balloon or hear her on Trick or Treat Radio just now. So like you know to to get people to you know get retailers to check stuff out, that diamond ordering book is like the Sears Christmas catalog yeah, every yeah. single month. Like there's no way that you're gonna see everything. Um, when I make my discount comics order, that's what I do that day, like because it's basically it, the yeah. digital version of the of the diamond catalog, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, help your retailer out, help Alex out, like, you know, it's it's a good quality thing, and you know, Rubber Chicken, which is you know, uh, the the funny bookstore that I hang out in uh, out here in beautiful Bellingham, Massachusetts, is very horror centric. Jay loves horror. So, you know, that was on his radar, so I was lucky enough to be able to walk in and grab it. But, um, you know, like, if if you don't know, you know, and, and a lot of horror comic, a lot of people think all you want is the superhero stuff, too. They don't know if you don't, if you don't, if you don't tell them, you know. But there's a lot of great, you know, I talked about The Cross on uh, the 31 Days of Halloween. Oh, that's El Goro show. I wasn't on there. <laughs> on uh, Countdown, Countdown to Halloween. <laughs> um, you know, a, yeah. a lot of, uh, you know, we've talked Two, you're probably sick of it about Halloween Legion, which is another phenomenal funny book. Um, you know, like there's a lot of great horror and and you know different kind of stuff out there. And as a former retailer, I am my primary thing. When I leave that place, I'm a comic fan. When I walked in there, I was the dude trying to keep the lights on. So whether I loved it or not, like if Spidey and Batman kept the lights on, that's all I cared about. But if right, if right. people wanted to buy horror comics. I would love it. So, you know, let your retailer know. That was a really good point, Michael Ravenshaw. Very poignant. Ooh. A very poignant point. There you go. You're welcome. I- is this episode going to be called Alex DeBang? No. Uh, <laughs> no. You ruin it. Why do you have to ruin it every time? What? She's going to be like, uh, she's going to be like, speaking of people on Twitter, the block. <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, Alex De Iglesia, Alex DeCampi, 
You were talking about what's her name? Carmen, Alexis. Al- Carmela Ben, which Carmella I'm gonna Bang. keep fucking talking about it off air. <laughs> but no, no, maybe maybe something better. Maybe, maybe something, something like class. maybe like yeah, maybe All right. grind about, grind. I know. I'm. T- How about Alex? Is it Jabba Remember Shishman? Children? Wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> we there yet? You want it to be, so you can go have a moment. I don't know. <laughs> see, you ruin it. You ruin it every time. <laughs> this is, th- that was a peer to peer conversation there. As an aspiring horror writer, like I was very impressed with like her knowledge and her, you know, like. Should leave me alone. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, are you trying to tell me you didn't have a bone study? The I whole time? did not. <laughs> I did not. He does, Johnny. I did not. <laughs> All right, we need to catch up on the. You ruin everything. You ruin I didn't everything. Ruin anything. We got to catch up on the chat. Um, Gene Siskel's balding head has been hanging out. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It says Dynamo is one hunk of a man. It's true. It's true. Uh, and this is about an hour ago. It says I bought my copy. I don't know if it was Grindhouse or I don't know. Uh, Bobby Chain says Vagina Mo. <laughs> Uh, Gene Siskel says 42nd Street, baby. Oh, man. Vagina Mo. I thought that it was gone. Uh, Bobby Chain says, Oh, shit. I left a serious voicemail and, and realized that I did my top six Halloween picks rather than all time favorites. Oh, well. That's my disclaimer. At least I was sober for once. And uh, Gene Siskel's giving you, uh, giving you shit for uh, texting. So I see Dynamo texting. Don't pod and text, mister. I'm not. I'm taking notes. See, <laughs> I can always tell when somebody new is in the chat. Uh, I am those those very exhaustingly extensive show notes that you get every single week is uh you know is me and I love the weeks where I don't have to go back and listen to the show <laughs> the next day cuz I hate to hear myself so I try to take care of it I was also looking up the fly <laughs> I don't know why. Since this is a fucking star studded episode. Oh my god. Yeah. We had Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum on. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> even have the opportunity to dwell on that. <laughs> no. Rock was in the house. Yeah. I think I know who Gene Siskel's balding head is, by the way. Really? Yeah. Finally. <laughs> uh, CGI cracked windshield? Heck, I could crack a real one right now, says Gene. It's true. Um, and then uh, Gene also says, after hours, I know what you mean. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. I I'm not, I'm not sure what that was in reference to. Ooh, Sorry. Unfriend. And then <laughs> 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 block. <laughs> And uh, uh, Rocky's hanging out, and he says, "Water wiggle, laugh my ass off." <laughs> yeah, Rocky ruined everything. Rocky says, "Jeff, motherfucking Goldblum." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like, uh, um, what was the guy from? Um, uh, shit, what was that movie? Shabba uh, Ranks. Nope, that's uh, not it. S- w- uh, it was that movie, Cockneys versus Zombies, with. Oh, oh. The motherfucker, the motherfucker from Snatch. So and so, motherfucking Alan, motherfucking Ford, right? Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. There okay, you go. there you go. So I guess they're in the same uh, class. S- yeah, same class. Jeff, motherfucking Goldblum, and Alan, motherfucking Ford. That's All right, outrageous. we have uh, some feedback to get oh. to. Man, I wish Jeff Goldblum would call back. Yeah, <laughs> did he leave can his we, number? Can we? Well, I called him actually. That's oh, crazy. Jeff, I think, Jeff I think Goldblum's he, number. I think he blocked me. He blocked <laughs> That seems to be a trend. Uh, uh, this We've week. had a great like, uh, like, like great. a great group of guests lately. Like uh, it's like pretty like uh, they just make me feel so stupid because they're all so smart. But like, mm-hmm. it's a it's amazing. Like I mean, we had Andrew Wallan and on and like she just pretty much saved our interview because we were exhausted. Like she came in and saved the show. Like. It's just ridiculous the people that we know and how talented like our untalented asses are surrounded by. <laughs> our guests should have podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they will. Yep. <laughs> so um I, f- I feel like there's more we need to do. I mean, we could just gush about about the interview or about Jeff Goldblum. Um but I guess we'll get to some uh, some feedback here. Let me pull up what do we have here? So we have a contribution from our new friends at Haunting TV. Oh, nice. Jeanette sent us a voicemail. Uh, and this seems like it could be a, maybe a, an ongoing thing, you know? Mm. Maybe it's not a one-time deal. So uh, let's check out. i, I got to stay. i got to turn the volume. Alan Ford see. was in Fable 2. How crazy oh, is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. So let's check out. This is HTV News from Haunting TV and nice. Jeanette. Hello, this is Jeanette from Haunting TV. Hi, Jeanette. Your reporter of the bizarre and obscure. This week, zombies have been pulled out of Lake Michigan. 
Really? But don't grab your shotguns yet. The bodies of the undead that rescue crews have been diligently pulling from the lake's depths are the tragic casualties of the storm local news stations are calling the Halloween Howler. This storm had massive 70-mile-per-hour wind gusts that sent 21-foot waves crashing into a floating haunted house called the Zombie Containment. It was once home to these drowned undead. As it sank, 50 or more zombie mannequins were sucked into the depths with it. The Coast Guard continues efforts to salvage what is left of the barge, sets, and zombies. So don't be too surprised Sad. if you hear a few reports of locals finding zombies washed up on the shores of Lake Michigan. Signing off, this is Jeanette from Haunting TV. I'm going to fucking steer clear of those fucking zombie waters. How about yeah. you, Dynamo? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's two great tastes that taste bad together. Another reason to not go to Detroit. <laughs> yeah. like, if you need it anymore. Yeah. yeah, it's probably the only place in the whole entire world that water zombies would make better. <laughs> I think so. I just think Detroit is so funny because they made RoboCop to be the worst possible Detroit oh, I, that they could imagine. I thought you were gonna say Detroit made RoboCop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they made RoboCop to be the like worst possible Detroit that they could imagine. Little did they know that like RoboCop Detroit looks like the Brady Bunch neighborhood. And, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> it's like a fucking war zone now. Yeah. We have oh. <laughs> Gene Siskel's balding head says, fuck yeah, pimp motherfucker. <laughs> we have um, another... Actually, hold off. I'm going to hold off on that one. We got a bunch of uh, um, voicemails from SpeakPipe. Let me pull up the SpeakPipe and see what we got. Whew, we got three. Let's yeah. listen to this first one here. This is, um, this is, this is from Chains, so I oh. guess it's from Bobby Chains. I wonder if he's uh, Rim Shadow. How how in the bag is he? I would say on a, on on a scale of zero to full. I'm thinking he's definitely waist deep. Yeah, waist deep in a bag. Waist I would deep. say that he is the strawberry sorbet that Tiny yeah. like gets the most of, so he throws it in the bottom of the bag. I'm not sure if it's head first or feet first, but it's it's waist deep. Okay, at least to the waist. Probably f- probably feet first. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, let's check out what, what Chainsy has to say here and see how uh, how much in the bag he is. Lead member of the Chang Gang, this is Bobby Chains. Oh no, not George. Roman Reigns, but I'll still give a Superman punch to all you fucks or all you drunks out there that are trying to fuck with us. I'll put a tape in your back. Are you Teddy Ruxpin? Nah, I get my knucks, spit right on my knuckle and punch you across the face with it. Kiss my ass with it. Your lips, not nah, this. Suck on my dick. That's what I fucking said last time I talked to your bitch. It don't matter, because I'm a rabid, rich motherfucker. <laughs> and I could still get down with the zeros, the heroes, the mock mirrors, they're marvelous. <laughs> but guess what? Last time he wrestled in the match, all he heard was crick guts. Because he got rick guts or herpes from that bitch slut, Sable, that he was with. I'm rapping about wrestling. Yo, <clears throat> This is Bobby Chains, lead member of the Chain Gang, and I'm saying right now, I will throw down in a rap battle with any motherfucker that you put before me. This is a different side of me that you've never seen. Wow. Wow. The monster is coming out. You think Stephanie raps? Growl. <laughs> that means growl. <laughs> wow. That means growl. Hmm? I love Bobby Chains. I love him. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know he had that in him. No, he's got a lot in him. Maybe we have to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we we'll have to get double bar. Oh, um, Snoop! Rap there was, battle. There was some double bar uh, Bobby Chains action outside the Lucky Dog. A little rap battle action. Hey, yeah. by the way, Bobby uh, Double Bar was there. <laughs> Did you guys meet him? Yeah. No, no, we didn't. He was there. Where's yeah, Tiny? No. I didn't want to introduce him. Yeah, I was very excited. I don't Tiny know if Tiny White it, should meet uh, Double Bar. Yeah, no. Tiny <laughs> said that that introduction happened upwards of twenty-two times, <laughs> at least, which I believe because I was heading towards fifteen or sixteen, <laughs> and I walked in with him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, next voicemail is from some jerk. Oh. That's all it says. So another chains one. Why are uh, we send? Why are we sending voicemails out to us? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's let's see who this is. I'm all off. Hey guys, Tom C here. Nice. 
Sorry, I haven't called in in so long, but I think I got a touch of the Ebola, so I've been laid up for quite a while. Get that, Jesus. I think Get that. Raven Shadow might have actually caught it from me, so stay away oh, from him shit. if you weren't already. Anyway, I really enjoyed your um, Halloween <laughs> special. Whoops. That was a fun show. I especially enjoyed Bobby Chain's contribution to that episode. Feud. Uh, he and I actually have a show coming up that we're working on. It's called Tom C. Sticks a Hot Poker. Bobby Chain's urethra. That's coming this winter, and he'll never come again. <laughs> oh, wow. all right. I am. I am saying right now that be, at some point before the end of the year, I'm going to get Tom C on this show. So you let's are. Make this happen. Yeah. Well, we, well. Especially, especially since we have so many empty chairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like, uh, I, I'm going to make that happen because I am a huge fan of Tom C as a dude. Wow. He didn't give us any rap battle or anything, but no, I, love, no. I love Tom C. He gives us bad audio, but hey, you know he he knows his shit well, though. The dude, the dude, yeah. the dude had the most, you know, dangerous fruit. He had a bowl of cherries. <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty dangerous. Yeah, they are. They're the pits. <laughs> Jesus. All right, we got another one from the Chain Gang. This is outside and in the Chain Gang. It's entitled "Outside the Enema" with Bobby Chains. What? So uh, here we go. Hey, fellas, what's up? It's Bobby Chains. So uh, bad. Earlier today, I got finished finally listening to the Halloween special of Outside the Cinema. Oh, great. Oh, the and, Halloween extravaganza uh, I figured stole? I'd put in my two cents or okay. six cents, be it as it may. Six uh, cents. My six picks for Bobby Halloween ghost. horror movies that I really dig, that are staples for me. So I got a short window here that I can give a very brief description and very poor, probably, because it's right off the top of my head. Uh, number one would be Bob Clark's Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things from 1973. Love right it. before zombies got red hot and uh, got raped by Italians. Hey. What's up, Raven Shadow? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's my number six right there. Uh, number five would have to be Larry Cohen's 1985 horror sci-fi comedy the stuff oh, it's an 80s one. take on you know the sci-fi horror of the 50s you know think invasion of the body snatchers meets the blob uh actually my oldest brother was named after a character in that movie chocolate chip charlie yeah <laughs> number four is kevin tenney's i think is how you pronounce his last name 1988 cheese fest night of the demons it's got Halloween, partying, Linnea Quigley, boozing. These are a few of my favorite things. Sounds like rock and shock. Uh, number three would be 2007's Michael Doherty's Trick or Treat. I disliked it when I first saw it because of all the hype, I think. You know, it, it, it just didn't gel for me sure. for whatever reason. But I gave it a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh. You know, I, I watch it over and over. I love the movie. Uh, it's awesome. Then number two would be 1977, Dario Argento, Suspiria. One word, perfect. That's all I'll say about it. And my final film on the list, and I know this is going to make Dynamo really happy, it's Robert Hiltzik's 1983 Sleepaway Camp. Oh. It's the first horror film I ever saw at the tender age of four <laughs> with mommy chains. Explains a lot. <laughs> Explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, that's all I've got, folks. Jeez. Continue to listen to Trick or Treat Radio, and also you need to check out Outside the cin Cinema. You can catch it on iTunes, Bill by Force, Mr. Chris, Oh My George, I'm out of here. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely pick out our um, check out our sister show outside the cinema because you know Bill and Chris are fucking terrific. Outside the yeah. cinema dot com. They, if you want to spend a day listening to nerdy folks talk about movies, get on your computer around seven, six, six or six p.m. I'd say, um, and um, check them out live, and then uh, hop on over to Trick or Treat Radioville. Mm -hmm. There you go. Cool. Thanks, Chains. Uh, that was a pretty cool list. Do you 
Obviously, you disagree with the sleepaway camp, Dynamo. Yeah, I, I, I was digging, like, not that it would be my list, um, but in, in the same way Mr. Chris's list on that show, um, I was digging some of that variety there. But uh, sleepaway camp just doesn't do it for me. Well, there you go. All right. Have you seen it, Raven Shadow? I've seen the box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Video store. I, I want to. I've, I, I've never seen the film, so yeah. uh, I don't know. I probably should. So I'll check it out one of these days. Um, we have one more. So the home office, once again, n- no clue uh, who's in the home office, uh, but uh, we got another Trick or Treat Radio spinoff. Nice. So I guess they're just running these and seeing which ones, you know, stick. The Malcolm Zero one seemed to be pretty popular. Yeah, yeah. Psycho Patrick loved that one. Yeah. So uh, let's see what they got in store for Trick or Treat Radio spinoff number four. Dear listeners, uh-oh. Return with us to the days of yesteryear when game shows were on the radio and nobody cared what happened to the losers. It's pop culture knowledge meets British super villainy, as the Trick or Treat Radio spin off showcase proudly presents. We risk your life. Join us every week when three contestants will be taken from the confines of their home and brought to our studio to play for their lives. And win fabulous prizes. Mm. And it's all hosted by the man who put the beat back and beat the clock. Okay, Nigel, listen up. The subject is music, and you're playing for a brand new washing machine. Which mythological hero is referenced in the first song of Led Zeppelin's seventh album? Mythological hero Achilles. What? You fucking idiot! Uh oh. Hey, hey! Oh! oh. Not supposed to shoot. Oh. Oh. You probably say Dire Maker too, don't ya? Arsehole. We Risk Your Life will show you that you don't need Alex Trebek to have contestants in jeopardy. Liam, the subject is movies, and you're playing for a new refrigerator. In the film Troy, what is the name of the character? Played by Brad Pitt. Tyler Durden. No! You stupid bastard! You didn't even get the movie right! Ooh. Besides, that was the name of Ed Norton's character. Besides regular, boring people like you, We Risk Your Life will also have the occasional celebrity contestant. Okay, Monster Zero. If you get this one right, you win $500 and a brand new Chevy Trailblazer. Wow. If you get it wrong, I'll spray your face with napalm until you look like the Ghost Rider. <sighs> now the subject is basic math. Oh, Jesus. Uh-oh. On a right triangle, if the sides that connect at the 90 degree point are two yards and 243.84 centimeters respectively, what is the length in feet of the third side? You have five seconds. Go! Ten. Correct! What? You've never had a game show like this before. We risk your life. Enjoying it is mandatory. Coming soon. And may the odds be ever in your favor. Wow. I can't believe Monster (laughs) figured that out. He's good at math, though. Percentages and like... That's true. He he does. Whenever we're missing people on the show, he figures that percentage out right away. The show is missing 40% of the There's hosts. N- that didn't happen because he's not here now. I know, exactly. We, we would have been able to figure that out, but but nope. All right, next we have an email. Ooh. You Anyone want to guess from who? Luan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Luan. Luan. Fucking Luan. Love you, ma'am. All right, this is a long one. He must, he must have had a little break from uh It's a Luan from school. long one. So uh, Luan says, hey, guys, I just finished listening to the Born on the Bayou episode. <laughs> A.K.A. Killers. <laughs> Why didn't we fucking call the episode that? Oh, that's pretty fucking good. <laughs> Born in the Bayou. Um, and I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> you don't get it? You're for real? I the, don't get it The either, character, his name is Bayou. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. He was the um, the one from Indonesia, the reporter. Anyways, uh, and I'm glad you guys enjoyed the film and gave it a treat. When I was lucky enough to watch the film, I had high expectations for it, considering all the talent that's involved. I was glad that the film met my expectations and didn't pull any punches. 
I loved the way the filmmakers portrayed the two killers. I liked how cold, calculated, and confident Nomura was in comparison to Bayou, who was emotional, bumbling, and torn inside. I liked the dichotomy between them, the locations, and the way they were shot. I loved how their locations fit in with their personalities. Even the color palette chosen matched the personalities of our two protagonists. There were a few things that I thought the film did a great job at. First, the graphic violence in the film was fucking brutal without being laughable or tasteless, which I appreciated. Second, there are scenes in this film that are fucking tense as hell. One standout scene is a sequence when the flower girl visits no more at his home when he's entertaining another guest. <laughs> yep. Everything in that scene from the build up to the stalking was so tense and so and executed so well. Another tense scene that I want to mention is the taxi scene with Bayou. The violence and tension within that scene for those few minutes was fucking crazy. The last thing I want to positive, positively mention was the mask that Nomura was wearing around his house when he tortures his victims. That is one fucking cool ass hooded mask. It looks like an executioner's mask and I can't remember ever seeing one being used in this type of film. I know it looks similar to the mask in The Town That Dreaded Sundown, but I believe the mask in that film was just a sack with holes cut out of while Nomura's well, no more uh, looks like an actual executioner's mask. I think it was an awesome choice by the filmmakers, if you ask me. One last thing. That prostitute was fucking hot as fuck. <laughs> I definitely wanted to see more of her if you catch my drift. <laughs> In the end, I really enjoyed this film. I'm glad you guys did as well. I think this would be good with I Saw the Devil as a double feature if someone has the time and wants a fucked up and twisted night of foreign goodness. Speaking of for foreign goodness, have any of you guys watched the Mo Brothers Macabre? It's another fucked up film that is kind of similar to the French horror film Frontiers. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, Frontiers wasn't bad. I've not seen Macabre. Have you, Dynamo? No. We'll have to check that out because I, I really am digging the Mo Brothers. So, help to check that out. I like to listen to if you go back and listen to past episodes, both Monster Zero and Michael Raven Shadow say Macabre. <laughs> <laughs> they say it right. Um, macabre. See? Macabre. McCorn on the macabre. Corn on the macabre. All right. Uh, all in all, I'm glad you guys liked this film and I really appreciate the, I really enjoyed the episode. I can't wait to hear next week's episode when you guys review Witching and Bitching. Keep up the good work and keep the episodes coming. Your pal, Luan. Fuck yeah, Luan. Yeah. Thanks, man. You're the best that was, I, I mean, I, I, I think we pretty much agree with everything you said. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty much what our feeling was. Like, this was such. A well-made film. The violence was just as brutal as it needed to be, and it wasn't laughable. You know, definitely, definitely uh, dug that film, and I'm glad uh, you took the time to write that and give us your thoughts, Luan, because I was very curious to see what you thought as well. You're the man, Luan. Dep, dep, definitely, not Dep. Johnny, definitely. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, Johnny <laughs> definitely. Uh, dep perception only. Yes, yeah. definitely. Thanks, Luan. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, hope hope to hear from you soon again, bud. Ooh. Uh, we got, this actually got forwarded ti since Tiny manages, uh, um, the, the sell, the, the sales of the album, uh, Big Scary Monster Hunts at Midnight. We got this. I thought it'd be worth that's, mentioning. That's a fucking tough job, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once every month he gets maybe one email. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so we got an email. Someone bought, bought the album off of Bandcamp, uh, that, I don't want to. The, the first name is Vessa. I don't want to mention their full name. You know, just I don't know if they listen to the show or not. I think Vessa is a boy name, which I didn't think it was. I think so. I think so. So Vessa says in the in the message. So Vessa had bought the album and sent a message through Bandcamp and says, "Aquaphobic is one of the most amazing and enchanting songs I've heard in years. Huh? The rest of the songs are great, also. Thank you for this awesomeness, Dynamo. Thank you." <laughs> Uh, it all has to do with a incredible composition of Tiny White and uh, the vocal stylings of two of the most uh, beautiful and talented women on earth. So, yep. so thank you, Vessa. I don't know if you listen to Trick or Treat Radio or not, but uh, but we appreciate you purchasing the album and and taking the time to leave us your feedback. Fucking cool. Uh, we have some. Tweets, Raven Shadow. You know Ooh, what that means. The trick or tweet segment. <laughs> That's right. Trick or tweet. Tweet. Uh, let me go back here. And I don't want to. Let me just make sure. Okay. So, Creative Eye 75, our new friend Alicia, nice. says uh, she had mentioned the upcoming Ash versus the Evil Dead uh, was 
ordered by stars for for an entire season um and she says they mentioned deadites and i guess she didn't know that we blatantly stole our name from <laughs> <laughs> from army from evil dead so it was a, it was a simpler time yeah Alicia. much much simpler time there so. was there was a like you couldn't get evil dead at all and yep. there was like you know like you when i may or may not have stole my copy of uh Evil Dead 2 from Ames. I don't know that anybody <laughs> noticed. Ames to please. Ames to please. Uh, now it's a th- now it's a thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. We were much cooler, and you know, 1992, it was a much cooler thing to do than it is now. Yeah. Looking at you, Dead Eye Two K. And uh, Jeanette um, from Haunting TV was nice enough to promote. She says, 9 p.m. tonight on YouTube, join up with the Monster Hunting Podcast, The Deadites, as they record live. I also make a voice appearance. We are we are rotten with beautiful and talented women over here in, uh, in Deadites land. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I th- thank you. Thank you to everyone. I think, that's, I think that's it for the feedback. Oh, by the way, yes, so that's it for the feedback. Thank you, everyone, for contributing, whether it was a, a voicemail, uh, email like Luan or tweet, even just a tweet. You know, simple, yeah. simple as that. If you're if you're on Twitter, uh, we're at the let Deadites. Yeah, just you know, just tweet at us. And let you know what you th- let us know what you think of of the show, our reviews, any of that stuff. So, um, I did want to mention. I forgot we were speeding through the end of the movie review and trying to get to Alex on time, and I forgot to mention what we're going to be reviewing next week. Dynamo, are you ready for this one? Yeah. This was basically you you and Tiny strong armed me to we, changing the pick. We we like seriously brought in like outside interference too. Like it was and it, it was ugly. It didn't really take a lot of, of yeah. strong arming to be honest. Uh because this movie was definitely on my radar, but it just so happened that it dropped on video on demand this past Friday. Draft yeah. House Films, who we love. We love Draft House Films. They put out some fucking great stuff. Obviously Miami Connection is is, you know, the big one that The Visitor. Yep, yeah, the visitor. So many good things. Um, so fine, so fine, so <laughs> elated, so many good movies. Um, but they 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 gobbled up the American distribution for Why Don't You Play in Hell? And I think it was was it you or Tiny that shared the trailer? Oh, I don't it was remember. Tiny. Okay, Tiny had posted the trailer on the fib and said that this is a batshit movie, and we. Need it was to. weird happenstance though because. Uh, like right when, like right around the time that Tiny did, our good friend Andrea asked me about it. Like, yep. So it was like that was going on at the same time. So, um, I felt like that sort of karmic, like universal synergy, it had to happen. Oh, um, so here it is. So yeah, Tiny White shared. This is uh, last week. Um, shared Draft House Films video, um, the the trailer for Why Don't You Play in Hell, and. Everyone who commented was like, "Like that looks amazing." And Andrea says it's seriously incredible. So I assume she's seen it. Um, everyone was just just going nuts about it. So what we did was we decided to call an audible. We took the film we we're going to review next next week and pushed it out till the week after. And so next week we're going to be reviewing the film "Why Don't You Play in Hell." And this film looks absolutely insane uh just actually let me see if i can read the synopsis because the synopsis is 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 fucking great um actually i, I want to read the one on draft house films site because it's it's uh it's even better um let me go ahead and head over here raven shadow uh what are you drinking right there <laughs> tell the folks i'm drinking a juice bag <laughs> <laughs> That's that doesn't sound. Uh, no, it's Capri Sun, Roaring Waters, uh, <laughs> a juice bag. Yeah, that's what the mean kids call Wolfie in school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's an innovation now because it's a, they have a see-through bottom. Remember in the sea lunch back in the day? Uh, yeah. You didn't know when you were done. You were slurping that like a. Mother. Well, you can see what color it is too, and know if it's toxic. <laughs> you fucking asshole! <laughs> I can't believe you're a real man. <laughs> All right, so here. Here is, uh, I I just have to read this because it it just sounds fucking crazy. Master filmmaker Sion Sono uh, described his frenzied, gleeful new masterpiece as an action film about the love of 35mm. Based on a screenplay he wrote nearly 15 years ago, Why Don't You Play in Hell is among Sono's very best work as his trademark excess and outrageousness is infused with an 
with an affection, not infection, an affection for the previous century of Japanese cinema. This is Sono with his talent and unique vision completely unleashed. So uh, I think this is, this is the synopsis of the film. There's a war going on, but that won't stop the inexperienced but eager wannabe film crew, the fuck bombers. Right, right there, sold. If there's a fucking group made in the fuck bombers, I'm in. <laughs> the fuck bombers from, their, from following their dreams of making the ultimate action epic. Ten years ago, Yakuza mid-boss Ikigami led an assault against rival Don Muto. Now on the eve of his revenge, all Muto wants to do is complete his masterpiece, a feature film with his daughter in the starring role before his wife is released from prison and the fuck bombers are standing by with the chance of a lifetime to film a real live Yakuza battle to the death on 35mm. Endlessly irreverent and wildly hilariously visceral, Why Don't You Play in Hell is a Tarantino-esque ode to the Yakuza films of yore and features an over-the-top, bloody, so- blood-soaked finale for the ages. Can't wait! And no, it makes the more exciting. One of my favorite uh, Asian action uh, uh, actors, I guess. Uh, uh-huh. f- uh, Tak Tak <laughs> who what? is in uh, one of my favorite underrated films, Versus. If you haven't seen it, oh, check yeah, that yeah, shit yeah, out. Yeah. And uh, Death Trance, which is also awesome. And um, it's it's I can't say her name, but it's 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 Itsu Ateo who was in Tokyo Gore Police. Oh yeah, it's um, Su- it's Suji Ateo. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is also uh, this is a, a pretty good cast. The reason I looked is there was somebody in that hyperkinetic um, uh, trailer that looked like uh, uh, um, hyperkinetic trailer looked like beat uh, beat, beat from Battle Royale. Yeah, I actually haven't. I I didn't watch the trailer because. I, I read the synopsis and was like, all right, I don't want to see anything. I just want to watch a movie. So, um, so I didn't I didn't even bother watching the trailer because I want to be surprised by everything in this fucking movie. It's, it looks ridiculous. So, um, I'm actually going to get a copy of it to Monster Zero. He I, I don't know if he's going to be joining us next week. Probably not. But um, I want him to be kept up to speed on all the films so that when we do the year end, our favorite films, he's watched all the ones that we've seen. You know. So, um, so I'm going to get a copy of him to that. And then the week after, I guess, uh, let's, hey, let's, oh, next week, Dynamo, we have a guest. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Um, very appropriate. And I, and, and he may, yeah. and he, I got to check in with him. He may be jumping on for the review uh, oh. as well. Uh, and uh, this trailer will make it, uh, his name uh, fits right in with this trailer. Um, we're going to be having a director of uh, Circus of the Dead and uh, Doll Boy, oh, Bloody yeah. Bill. Yeah. He's going to be on next week straight from uh my hometown of uh well my home state <laughs> of uh texas, texas so yeah. well, my hometown tokyo texas yeah I, that's I very appropriate might, for next yeah, he week might, he might live in tokyo texas actually <laughs> i haven't checked so yeah that's awesome we, the, the contact you had been talking to bloody bill but yeah. um when we did the when you reviewed doll boy on the countdown to halloween that's when talks begin to pick up i guess you could say so uh so bloody bill will be joining us next week uh, and we're going to review Why Don't You Play in Hell. So that should be another fun episode. And then the week after, uh, I'm going to hold off on announcing the movie. Yeah. Um, be- because uh, it's, I think it's hitting, it hasn't hit VOD. I just want to make sure it's going to hit Which VOD. Which is outrageous because everyone I know saw it in a fucking theater. So I know. I'm not sure how that. Yeah, I know. But we are going to have a guest in studio. We will have our boy, the fucking film Gestapo, yeah. <laughs> if you will. Who we will be hearing from next week. <laughs> Probably. If Alex made a mistake. <laughs> exactly. Or if we made a mistake, uh, we're going to have our boy Josh from Arkham Film Society is going to be in the studio two weeks nice. from tonight. And uh, I, I, rumor is he picked a film for us to watch. So I think that episode we're going to be doing two reviews. Um, he's he's He keeps laughing maniacally and rubbing his hands together when, when he mentions it. So... I don't know what he's got up his sleeve, but uh, we'll that's just because he's OCD, though. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> <laughs> could be, but we'll find out soon enough. Oh, no matter what chair I sit in. Would you break that chair too? Yep. You know what I noticed? That I chair am so fat. No, that's not it. I actually looked. That chair is missing two screws. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. So it's not you. T yeah, Dog was sitting in it, and and like she's almost, tiny. Yeah, yeah and that, almost fell out. So it's not you. That means that means this whole area is missing about six or seven screws. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. And next week, if everything goes right, we might have some even more upgrades to the studio here. Yeah. Ooh. And we'll have, we, we promise we will have all the information that you will yeah, need for to the take contests. place in both of these contests. Yep. But the thing is, number one, for the Amazon contest that we're running until the end of the year, just just use our link and buy as much as you as you as you want and yeah. and everything you buy um each thing you buy will give you one chance will will give you a chance to win you know we, we know what I might want to do down I haven't run this by anyone so this is completely um probably crazy me to mention no but I will not make out with no, you no thank thankfully that's <laughs> thankfully you won't be doing that but maybe what we can do is we can put a, together a prize package um uh of of Including some of our stuff, maybe, but also people who we've interviewed throughout the year. Oh, that would be phenomenal. Uh, Alex DeCampi. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't even want, I don't even want to name names. Yeah, yeah, well, there's but a lot. Martin Powell, Mike Allred. We've had some fucking amazing yeah. guests. Bob so, Salvatore. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if we can maybe put something together. Maybe we can even get some of it signed. Yeah, that would be phenomenal. That would yeah. be really awesome. So. Some people live close by, so that might be doable. Somewhere, somewhere, Kari Andrews. Yeah, somewhere jo- jo- Josh is like, that might get depreciating value. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I also got, this just arrived today, uh, I got an awesome uh, Ziltoid the Omniscient uh, puppet. Nice. Um, he looks for, just like him. Yeah, so for anyone who's into Devin Townsend, uh, he released, um, releasing, recently released Z2. Uh, it's the follow-up to Ziltoid the Omniscient, and uh, so... They were selling these uh, these puppets, and I'm a big fan of Devin Townsend and uh, and also Ziltoid, so had to get this. It's pretty <laughs> fucking great. It's supposed to be hanging up in the studio somewhere. Um, also, Raven Shao, can you hand me that book again? I want to yeah. show off how gorgeous this book is. If you guys want something, I have I I can't speak to it because I haven't had a chance to read it yet. It just arrived today, literally like a few hours ago. But this is one of the most gorgeous books I've ever seen. Yeah. This is oh, it's beautiful. S- Smoke Ashes from Alex DeCampi, who we interviewed. Uh, it this is I don't know what you, what do you call this uh, slipcase? Slipcase. It's 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 hardcore. Like this is it's like the slipcase is gorgeous. Like the the images on this and like the cover on this is so fantastic. The art is is gorgeous. I'm super excited. I may dive into this after the show. Um, yeah, it looks it looks so good. So elated to read this. So fine. <laughs> so fine. Doc Ross doesn't fuck. No, they don't give two fucks. Is that right? That's not probably not the u- right usage of that. Wow. But uh, sh- this was the Kickstarter. This is one of the Kickstarter rewards, and she has some left over. So I imagine once these are gone, that's it. They're gone because they were made specifically for Kickstarter. So head over to Alex DeCampi's uh, Big Cartel. So just go to Alex DeCampi. And by the way, it's A L E X Alex Da Campy is D E C A M P I Alex DeCampy dot com, and there'll be links to her big cartel and her Patreon, and definitely help her out because she is a great writer, great yeah. filmmaker, and it sucks that she's she. I don't know if she she like me saying this, but she works a part time job. She has to go to work tomorrow at six a.m. I do. I, you know, I work a part time job. Well, you're. All, I mean. Sure, but you know, you know, you're I'm also not. I'm not, not, I'm not even. Maybe you. I'm, you're I'm, a great writer. Don't get me wrong, but well, I'm not. I mean, I'm actually arguing with uh, with Miss M about writing right now. But like the the thing that's funny about it is that, like, I don't know. Like, there is a confidence and deafness, deafness in in the mm-hmm. writing of Grindhouse that almost belies its trashiness, like um, in both subtext and. Um, the ability to pull off so much with so little. Yeah. So yeah, I, basically Absolutely. in in Deadites terms, I couldn't, I, I should, I wouldn't be able to carry Alex DeCampi's bags into the building. So. <laughs> I would if she needs someone to carry. <laughs> yeah, her bags. <laughs> that's not all. Yeah. Well, you saw, no, you ruin it. You ruin everything. I'm not what? this lecherous. No, you'd like carry your baby too. Pervert. Or Just because I've been talking for the last half hour about Miss M and Underoos. Look at this fucking guy. Like, fuck. We Speaking went one of... whole show without a fucking. Technical I, malfunction. I'm, the thing is, is fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I'm not saying anything, Dynamo. You're the you're 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 reading a little bit too deep into yeah, it because you, you have a guilty conscience. I about don't something. have a guilty conscience. I don't. It's a good thing Tiny's not here. You know that. Uh, why? Because really we, we can't because we can't make out. <laughs> no, he'd be backing me up. Yeah. <laughs> You're in cahoots. Yeah. In cahoots. Yeah. So oh, if, don't you remember me and Tiny are in cahoots? We're mean. Yeah, exactly. Jerks. Cahoots is code for making out. <laughs> yeah, shut. <laughs> remember, children. 
Well, it's almost that time. It's almost that time, children. So, um, Raven Shadow, any any final thoughts for the folks? Uh, no, I think we're done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you, you you dictate when we're done. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> well, I, mean well, I enjoyed the, the Gotham. <laughs> I watched a couple two episodes of Gotham. That's yeah, pretty good. Um, Mr. Zaz running them up. Yeah, that was pretty cool, huh? Victor uh, Zaz. So my, uh, you want to hear something fucking a tragedy? Have not sure. watched a single Constantine oh, yet. Oh, and you can't. Have not watched a single Flash yet. And my DVR died today. Oh. Uh, Dynamo, when you have some time off, let me know. I think I have them all saved on mine. Oh, nice. Yeah. If, if you can't find them online. No, so. That would be awesome. Um, I, I just sh- feel bad. Like, I, I had that conversation with my special lady friend, and like, it's almost like I feel like there's a part of her that feels like I did it on purpose because... Uh, we had the conversation like, oh, you can watch the movie. And it was like, no, why don't you watch Supernatural? I would feel terrible. <laughs> like, out of the blue with no reason to think this would happen. Yeah. I mean, we lose we lose power a lot if the wind blows the wrong way up there. You know, but like, uh, you know, I was like, a bunch of my Flash is just deleted for no reason. Mm-hmm. Like, why don't you watch Supernatural now and, and get it out of the way? I know you love it. No, 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 no I'll watch it tomorrow. Yeah. Nope. Nope. So I, I feel Cable bad. company had other ideas. Uh, and the, the inept... Idiot I had to talk to for three hours, who I was telling him, like, oh, this looks like it's stuck in having a firmware update. Oh, well, let me try to shut it off from here. It's not shutting off. Still saying it's downloading. Everything's gone, huh? Yeah. Yep. And it would, it would turn on, and it would, like, I was able to change the channels, but, like, yep. um, I wasn't having any uh, info or, like, the clock, and I couldn't access anything. So after talking to this guy for two hours, he was like, I think it's broken. I'm like, well, fucking thanks. I knew that at 5 a.m. when it was waking <laughs> me up when it kept yeah. turning off over and over again. Oh, thanks, Tiny. He just, I, I commented on, on our, um, on, on the live show uh, link, and uh, I said Jeff Goldblum was on the show, and he just liked it. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so maybe he's done, maybe he's out, out of Wegmans. Could be. They have bad service there. Yeah. It took apparently. me a half hour to put that picture of uh, me in that bathroom because nobody would believe it. <laughs> I, I shit the hell out of that bathroom, too. Oh, Jesus. So, um, also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, why don't you play in hell? If you want to play at home and watch the film, go to, I think it's Draft House Films. Let me verify that. But you can watch it right from their website. Yeah, drafthousefilms.com. Uh, you go there, and pretty much the first thing that pops up is, why don't you play in hell has arrived. And you can watch it right now. You click on it right there. And uh, you can rent it for six ninety nine, or you can buy it for twelve ninety nine. If you buy it, you can stream it and download it anytime you want. So um, this is, you know, Draft House is, is a really fucking cool company. So um, you know, definitely toss them some some cash if if you want to check this movie out. It's it's bon- it looks bonkers, and we're gonna yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, we're gonna review it and check it out. So DrafthouseFilms.com will uh, will get you that. So I think that's going to do it. We had a fucking great show. We had our buddy Rocky joining us for a I review. was worried, too. Yeah, because we weren't sure. It was just, I thought it was just going to be the three of us, which, you know, probably would have been fine. But Well, um, I mean, in my opinion, uh, 75% of this show is funny, and 100% of it wasn't here today. So <laughs> Thanks, Monster Zero. Thanks for those. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, he does it better. He, math, he, does, it, he does it correct. Yeah. yeah. So we had that. We had Jeff Goldblum. Oh, like, yeah, it, Jeff Goldblum was on. It was fucking crazy. I, like, like he took took the time out of his night. WTF. Yeah, to take a call can from I us. Can I take this Wikipedia printer? It's mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. No, sh- what is it? Nothing. <laughs> it's about Jeff Goldblum. Oh, oh, oh. no, no. I, <laughs> I know. I know. Oh. Uh, Raven Chow, you printed out Alex DeCampi's Wikipedia I did. page. I did her research. And, uh... Now it's ruined. Vagina over here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys everything. I just want to learn things. Yeah. Uh huh. So <laughs> the the ride home is going to be interesting tonight, Dynamo. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to sit in the back seat. <laughs> All right. So I think <laughs> who's driving? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't win my exploit license yet. <laughs> exploit. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it, Dynamo. Why don't you go ahead and take us out? Remember, children, wherever you go, there you are. Thank you to Alex DeCampi, to Rocky, to Jeff Goldblum for joining us this evening. And we will be joining, uh, we'll be joining you. We'll be in your fucking ear holes next week. <laughs> Bloody Bill, and why don't you play in hell, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>